Hello everybody, good uh, good evening in fact uh, to those of you in Australia tuning in perhaps for the first time, welcome on board, it's great to have you all with us and uh, already a lot of viewers and uh, an explosive chat, it's great to see the chat busy and alive. Welcome to Orbex, Melbourne, Tullamarine International Airport, Tulla as it's also known locally it seems and uh, famous with a couple of things like the two towers that we begin at today. We're going to be flying after a good exploration of this scenery to wonderful Hamilton Island created by AU Scene as well which is uh, something that I'm really really looking forward to as well. If you're new to the channel it's great to have you with us. Hit like and subscribe and come and say hello in the live chat if you're from Australia as well. Give us a little Australian flag if you want as well and uh, we kind of get a bit of an idea of who is from where. Lots to see. We begin at the towers of course and uh, the area around the fire training grounds before making our way over towards the meat of the, uh, the scenery over there. Uh, that is the main terminal area. As you can see as well as we begun our journey today, as we begun the stream, we've got uh, the Melbourne City Pack installed in the background looking absolutely stunning. Good evening to um, Justin, Captain Fozzy as well. We've got Big Jacko's Gaming, another content creator in the uh, live chat. Welcome to you, Australian based. Uh, I think near to Melbourne from what I understand as well. Uh, and then all of the other <laughs> channel members in the live chat as well. <laughs> Chinook, Sambid, MPS Gaming, Zato, Badger, welcome guys. Ian over in Perth, good evening to you. Great to have you on board. What have we got then? So, let's zoom on out. We'll start on the corner. The furthest point away from the terminal shall we and uh, I've not really explored this all that much to be totally honest because I wanted to leave my reaction completely open to you all but also hear your thoughts because some of you are local to Melbourne you might know the scenery in the airport particularly well so I'm uh, looking forward to hearing what you all think in the chat too so share your thoughts as we fly along and uh, beginning here at 09 what we did notice, um, uh, kind of early, kind of connecting in and looking at performance, the textures on the runway are really nice. You've got that gridding along the runway, which helps in real life that water dissipation. Um, certainly, days of heavy rain. Lazarus Calispera, hello to you. Got our, our Royal Australian Air Force virtual in the chat too. Epic. Uh, a couple of people saying. When is it coming out? Uh, I don't actually know, to be honest. It's um, it is obviously coming out fairly soon because otherwise they wouldn't have us showing a preview of it um, to kind of introduce the scenery to you. Zane, welcome. Epic. Melbourneian and a baggage handler at Melbourne International Airport as well. Justin in the live chat uh, helped with a little bit of fact finding for me to understand. Um, Melbourne a little bit more because naturally of course I'm from the UK um, as much as I would absolutely have loved to have visited Melbourne and Australia generally in real life it's uh, a little bit too expensive for me at the moment but one day soon Guitar says can you have a look at the end of the runway 27 to see if the lookout is modelled in with the ice cream van <laughs> I'll have a look. I don't think I've seen an ice cream van yet, but <laughs> we'll see. Uh, a musical aviator asking the same. I'm not sure. We'll find out in a moment. Runway 16 has got different texturing. Look at that. Lots of rubber burn there as well. Over 32 million people transit through Melbourne International every single year. And it's uh, Australia's second busiest. Uh, 1.6, right, so we were actually close to it, weren't we? Where were we? So 1.6 is there. I assume the lookout is going to be by the road. So it's going to be this area here, right? Let's have a look. We'll get the drone camera wound up. Yeah, second big busiest uh, airport in Australia after Sydney. And in 1971, flights were shifted from uh, Melbourne Essendon, another Orbex scenery just round the corner. Oh my god, there is actually an ice cream truck. <laughs> I love this. There you go. Airport ice cream and kebabs. Hopefully not eaten at the same time. <laughs> that wouldn't be a great combination, would it? But yeah, look at that. 
You can even see the prices. That's 16 Australian dollars for a hot dog. Or no, 6 Australian dollars. My goodness. Some tasty gelati. <laughs> yeah, there you go. How's that? Fantastic. How exciting. <laughs> We've got the... Uh, I mean, it's given us a good opportunity, actually. Look at the, uh, the runway leading lights and the approach here as well. That's fantastic. Let me just zip the time here. I know we, we haven't yet seen night time, but I want to see it pop. Woo! Oh boy. That's epic. How bright are those lights? That is really, really quite nice. You can just about see the apron off in the distance as well. We'll look at that in more detail as we get closer to it as well, of course, at night time too. It's important. Gav's hometown. Good evening. Welcome, buddy. Little uh, run-up area there by the looks of it. And we've got a few bits. White windsock as well. Uh, lots of custom ground textures here. Longest flight, apparently. I didn't know this. Uh, Justin found out for us as well earlier on. Longest flight from Melbourne is to Dallas-Fort Worth. There's a journey whopping 16 hours covering over 9,000 kilometers, which is mega. What a, I mean, that's a huge journey. Qantas, of course, doing some mad trips at the moment, of course, as well, um, from Sydney and elsewhere. I think they've just zipped over to New York recently as well, haven't they? Not sure who operates the flight to Dallas-Fort Worth from here, though. And in 2026, two years, um, <laughs> supposedly two years after Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 arrives. Yep, I've mentioned it. Um, in 2026, Melbourne will see a new one point. Oh, yeah, there we, there's the VOR. Uh, a 1.9 billion Australian dollar parallel runway to 16 and 34. One thing that you'll get when you when it's released and you get to install this scenery. Uh, you'll get a whole load of toggleable options inside the Orbex Central app. Um, and that is going to allow you to tune things in depending on your own systems. So uh, the one thing I've toggled off today, I've got everything else switched on. All of the checkboxes for various things like custom ground service equipment and passengers inside the terminals. Um, but you can also turn on um, basically full car parks. So... What you would then get is over 1,000 cars dotted around in the car parks here at, S uh, at Telemarine. Oh yeah, that's look, that's cracking, isn't it? Look at that. But it's it's one of those things that they recommend just turning off. So I've done that today. I'm running the RTX 4090, of course. It doesn't give you a really good idea on performance, but I'm running the sim at 4K 60 frames per second with the PMDG 737. If there are areas that uh, you guys want to see, do let us know as we kind of zip around and have a little look. And while yeah, you can see the bright approach lights strobing in towards the runway from the ice cream van. Wonderful bit of uh, work there. Taz Flyer as well, another content creator. Welcome. Great start to the stream, mate. Great work. Thank you very much, buddy. It's great to have you on board with us as well today. And I'm, if you are a, an Australian content creator, I am curious to hear what you think of this in the chat too. Qantas uh, maintenance by the looks of it. Big old Qantas logo, it's looking good. It's a little bit of cargo. And we're going to zip around the taxiway because I want to go to the other side. I'm leaving... I'm leaving the terminal till last, of course. Look at those textures. Whew. We are connected to the VATSIM network today as well. Bit of cracked concrete slabbing there as well, looking good. Some evidence of taxiway repairs dotted around. Lovely uh, silhouettes and things from the light masts beaming in the shadow. Hello David, welcome. No worries. Spawn game and have a good one. Tank787 says been looking forward to Melbourne for three years now. Finally 
be able to get back to doing Milk Run Mondays on stream. Yeah, it's one of those uh, things that I don't really take part in all that much. Here's one of the first custom ground service equipment items. A little tratter zipping around. My goodness, how many Osprey? <laughs> That's fantastic. This is good. I don't think we've got enough space at Hamilton Island for this. Here's one of the baggage store areas in the centre. Actually, really stunning. Uh, the detail they've put into this. So, what they've done is custom ground polys reflecting the layout as of May 2023. So, only last month they've got everything kind of put in ready for this. Interior terminal modelling of the departure lounges. Not really anything else on the land side sections, but that's because it's already quite well detailed. There's a vast amount of quality and detail in this scenery already. They've uh, tweaked and improved the satellite imagery as well to make sure the colour balance is as close to real as possible. Custom points of interest like the Air Services Australia compound, some landside hotels, the car parks that we spoke about a moment ago, uh, apparently are Maccas and a Mercedes-Benz dealership with a helipad as well. And they've also done a detailed recreation of the Melbourne jet base with interior and static model of the restored DC-3 Kanana. Little zip of my frame generation thing working away there. I, you know, I've estimated around about 30 minutes. Uh, on the ground here, but we're not really sure how long it's going to take. We've already been 12 minutes in and we've got so much to explore. For those of you who haven't seen Hobart, uh, sorry, Hamilton Island as well, it's really stunning. And Australia itself is actually now um, becoming as complete as uh, New Zealand, just further south. There is a lot to see. There's a lot of really good scenery now coming around uh, for Australia in MSFS. Let's turn the drone camera down a little bit. So this section here, what do we got? A little static here, first little uh, glimpse. Little Qantas training aeroplane. Ah, it's a Piper. Yeah, Mike, so I mentioned a few moments ago, uh, if you missed it, the, in effect, what's this? Airports Authority of India. <laughs> Okay, static cars just kind of randomly placed. This is the maintenance section, right? Let's have a look at the night time, see what it looks like. That's the weather. There we go, enough for lights on. Look at that. Not sure what the price will be, nor the release date either, actually. I'm not sure, to be honest with you guys. Ah, somebody mentioned DC3, I think, didn't they? There it is. Big Al's playing. Yeah, the inside of the tower is modelled. We can zip back and have a look at that, actually. I did forget to uh, have a look at that, didn't I? So both towers have got an interior in there. It's fairly, fairly basic in what they offer, but it's there. There's a... Uh, Good old DC-3 in the Melbourne jet base. I did wonder where it was actually on the charts, but here we are. Really nice looking building. Donata catering in the backdrop. Some snazzy motors as well. Round we go. And then inside the hangar, there's a little bit of business going on here as well. Some super shiny jet there, my goodness. A couple of statics there, just to give it a little bit of pop. I'm not sure if there's an interior to this. It says highly detailed. Uh, what have we got in the windows here? Ooh, maybe there is. Oh, no. It's one of those snazzy parallax. Um, oh, no, there is an interior of this bit. wonder then if therefore we can see the DC-3 parked. Ah oh, yes, look at that. Yep, 
Yeah, that, and that's one of the things that they've asked me to do, actually, is uninstall Melbourne Essendon. Uh, just to kind of help with performance. Because um, there's a couple of uh, parallax bits. Or like, you know, with the, the textures where you go hard inside the building. So it kind of bounces you back out again. Yeah, so we can't really get into that top floor of the um, jet centre at the moment, but we have seen it, I guess. I want to go and find a Mercedes-Benz dealership now. Um, I'll let you guys help me decipher where that is likely to be. Big old Donata Catering. I was saying the DC-3 is actually in the building in real life. I suppose they've put it outside in this scenery just because it is unique to that little section of Melbourne. So it kind of pops in the scenery as a little uh, little bit of a special feature. I mean, the jet centre itself, look at the detail of the uh, the curves and things on the design of the, the hangar. Really nicely done. Couple more hangars here. Near the Tuller Freeway for Merck. Lovely. I assume that's near where Macca's is as well. And uh, some more Melbourne Jet Base hangars here too. What have we got? QF Golf, welcome. A little fly by wire uh, tribute there by the looks of it. Look at that. And I'm curious to see what the lights look like. So let's do the time again. But they light up the uh, the the model nicely enough, don't they? Of course, it's already darkness in Melbourne. It's uh, coming up to was it eight seventeen Australian East Standard Time, if that's what it's called. I think it is. So uh, it's already darkness for you guys on the other side of the world. It's a little BAE Systems hangar there and a helipad. We're on live weather as well. That's a point, Captain A320. Today we don't have... We've got GSX installed. We will be using it for pushback as well, naturally. But we don't have a way... Uh, we don't have a custom GSX profile for this. So because of that, uh, GSX might be a little bit random for us until one of those uh, pops up. <laughs> These lights are moist. <laughs> Love it. Uh, Caleb, this is the release candidate, I believe. So this is likely to be the one that makes it through to Orbex Central for real. Um, there is a product page for Orbex Melbourne Telemarine. Already on their Orbex Central, to be fair. Uh, you guys can tell me if these are realistic as well, those of you who know the area. Packfreshhandling.com.au We've got Western Freight Management, good old AMI, Air Menzies International. I'm not sure, they've not had much of a, um, they haven't really mentioned whether or not there's a custom GSX profile in there. Perhaps if there's somebody from Orbex in the chat, they might be able to answer those questions. If you are from Orbex, give us a little wave, say hello. Yeah, look at that for a backdrop. Looks really good, doesn't it? Huge scenery. And obviously, if you then toggle the car parks to be pre-filled with the cars, there would be a thousand cars spread around all of these car parks as well, giving you a properly realistic feel. Um, but they've said they recommend this to be a toggle that's turned off just to help with performance. And there are a couple of real neat things actually that are they're kind of linked to the car parks as well, I guess. But there are some animated buses bespoke to the area that uh, we will spot. In fact, they're on, they're in the distance. Some of them are animated and drive about too. If I go really high, I'm going to look for Mercedes 
and the Maccas. I'm assuming this is the Tuller Freeway, right? That goes off into the distance over there. Which then would come down naturally past the airport. So then Mercedes should be... That's the Ibis budget. Oh look, there's the little red bus driving about. Merc's going to be around there somewhere. We'll find it, we've got lots of time to explore. I'm in no rush. And if not, you guys will guide me in any way, no doubt. There's the Sky Bus. So what they've done is they've tried to kind of put in a number of different vehicles that are maybe familiar with those of you who have used Melbourne in real life. Lovely. We will find it. Thanks, guys. Toll and Donata. We've got the approach roads in towards the terminal. Justin, I'll see you in Hamilton Island, buddy. We've still got probably another 25 minutes on the ground, roughly. In fact, with that in mind, let's get GSX prepped. Uh, in fact, I won't worry about boarding. We'll just go straight into the pushback. First point, animal services. That's going to be like the animal control centre at London Heathrow, I suppose. Uh, dealing with the movement of animals and pets and things through the airport. And we've got the renter cars over here as well, Avis and Budget and Hertz. Three hours, Craig. And Hamilton Island, if you haven't seen it, Hamilton Island is spectacular as well, really nice. Alex, I think this flight is operated on, is it Virgin? Virgin Australia and Jetstar, I think Doc said. Yeah, ground textures, obviously just the satellite imagery, but they have tried to kind of make it look as realistic as possible. Uh, let's go past the freight terminal, which is just there. Let's have our first look at the forecourt. There's the Australian Federal Police Building. Really nicely detailed. And here comes the entry to the terminal. Let's slow this down. We'll have a real good look. 11 departures, 9 Rosprey Dino, epic. Look at this. There's the big multi story on the right hand side. The noise of jet blasts behind us as well with aircraft firing up the engines. We're expecting uh, runway 14, I think, Alex. Um, when we get to Hamilton Island, though the weather could change, who knows? We'll play it by ear based on the weather. What have we got? Let's have a look. We'll have a good pan around, make sure I don't miss anything and zip past it. Don't let me forget as well, folks, when we get back towards the aircraft to have a look at the tower interiors as well. There's the Sky Bus doing its thing. <laughs> race it. Ah, Rex as well. Virgin Australia Terminal 4. And there's the big park Royal Hotel. The entry slip onto the forecourt as well. Yeah, it definitely is, Paul. That really good. Love the depth of detail here. And uh, let's go back towards the land side sections because we've got to go and see Mercedes Benz and some of the hotels land side. The sky bus is busy, it kind of does its thing down um, down the bottom actually, all the time, just kind of roots around and loops back. There's Merc, past the Holiday Inn. 
Mac is to the left, thank you. We'll go back to there imminently once we've had a look at Mercedes Benz. Good old drone camera. Kind of slipping and sliding. There's the helipad, I think. Is, is that the helipad? Didn't know it even had a helipad. My goodness, this must be the poshest Mercedes Benz in the world. <laughs> Imagine flying in on a helicopter just to buy a Mercedes Benz and then not even driving it away afterwards, just fly just flying out of there. Yeah, cheers mate, deliver it to my house. There it is. So much detail land side as well, and, and naturally every developer has to strike that balance, don't they? Um, they've got to strike the balance with performance against how much detail they pump into the scenery and they try to offer as much as possible landside with some of those key features as well that we you know you guys have all been looking out for as well like the like the ice cream van on the threshold of runway 16 somebody said Maccas was over here on the left somewhere didn't they World 25 in Melbourne, welcome buddy. There it is. There, I can see the golden arches a mile off. Well versed in that. <laughs> Which means, here it is. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Probably get a copyright strike now. <laughs> and a BP. There we go. Ah oh, yes, Wild Bean Cafe. Some of the best coffee on the, on the go. And there we go. I'm curious. Do they do Big Macs here? Go into Macca's. There's no, there's no interior. Imagine if there was. Of all the places, they would put an interior into the McDonald's. That would be brilliant. <laughs> Alright, okay. Let's go to the main part now. We'll have a look at the forecourt. There's no land side interior um, here at... Melbourne Tullamarine. Naturally, no doubt, to save on performance, but there's a lot of detail in the departure lounges as well. Here's the main concourse area. We're going against the flow of traffic past the Qantas area of the terminal there. Really nice. And if we just zip out a little bit, we change the time. It's always good to see what it looks like at sunset. One of my favourite times of the day here in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Look at that. Really nice. And Kroger, yeah. We'll have to make a quick departure and get away from AFP then. <laughs> hey, look how stunning this looks. Some purple light. Oh, purple lighting there as well. In fact, even the sign. Really nicely detailed. And look at that for a backdrop there, the Park Royal. just beyond the Park Royal as well if you can see it you got that little Melbourne sign down there as well we'll have a look at that close up did they model the kangaroo docks asking which one <laughs> there's, there's a few hundred in Australia there's the sky bus as well zipping past again Meet me. Free Wi-Fi. Epic. What's the password? Yeah, lots of hard work gone into this, which is why it's taken them a long time to uh, to have a look at and kind of generate as well. They they naturally, I think Orbex is still based in Melbourne as well, isn't it? So they uh, they want to get it right, don't they? For for everybody, this will be their kind of showpiece scenery, if you like. There's the Melbourne sign. And if we just zip to there, change that time. Here we go. That should be about right. Look at that. Yeah, all based, based in Essendon, but Zin they they are a Melbourne-based company, aren't they? Um, so they they want to get it right for you guys, especially those of you who are local to the airport as well, because uh, they're as local as you are, naturally. So it's important for them, I suppose. And uh, their product page, 
that, that they've now got available on their website says um, there's a couple of acronyms. I'll put the link to it in the description actually in the live chat today. So you can have a little poke on a, another tab. There it is. If you look at the way that they've structured the paragraphs, it says why MML when Melbourne when uh, for the kind of product description, which is quite funny. I mean, I love the apron textures. Airside is obviously where we're going to spend a lot of our time, and they've done lots of custom work. They've got Null Aero VDGS as well, which works, which we'll have a little look at. And uh, yeah, elements of the departure lounges, the bits that we will see as pilots. Filled in and uh, nice and busy. There we go. We'll poach into this one. If you can have a look, there you go. Look at that. Gav saying this is spot on. Great to hear. I mean, they have done some really nice work with this. What have we got in here? Any caramel? No. That's a shame. Lots of uh, flights on the board. Look how clear that is. My goodness. BA 371 to London. The Qantas 415 to Auckland. Lots. Qantas uh, Coach Air to Dubai as well. Fiji Airways to Tokyo. A lot of Coach Airs on here. A lot of kind of random ones as well, like the BA162 to Sofia. <laughs> I don't think that goes there. <laughs> Very nice and crisp detail though. We uh, zigzag, wigwag through the terminal. Punch, psh. Glass smash noise. Uh, and also, right, so there, there's the tower over there. So we'll work our way back round. To have a little look at the terminal areas. Impulse, hello, impulse simulations in the live chat. Welcome. <laughs> it's not very accurate. I can't see any delayed jet stuff flights. <laughs> there we go. What have we got here? So another section of the departures lounge. So this one is kind of the main area, I guess. Two levels. Uh, the shops aren't detailed. All they've done is they've put in to the shops uh, a really nice high detailed image if you like so from the outside looking in you can see stuff inside uh, the glass as well look at that beautiful see-through textures it is wonderfully detailed same on the lower floor here as well And then you can see there from that door, it kind of goes back to being um, non, non custom interior, if you like. Same for this section of the departures lounge. Some of the lounge sections are supposed to Melbourne. A lost child wandering around looking for their parents. Looking really nice. And even from the outside, look at that. <laughs> Gap says many beers drunk there at the Qantas Lounge. Jordan says, well, if you look hard enough, a picture I created is hidden somewhere in the scenery, and it's a picture that says, Melbourne when? My goodness, have you got any clues as to where that might be? Look at that. Packed. They obviously heard uh, we were streaming from here today. How are you doing, Impulse Simulations? I think you're making Perth, aren't you? How's that all coming along? Oh, look at that busy apron, my goodness. Got a couple double spawn there as well. We've got one pushing back, that Osprey floating away. Uh, while we're here, because we're kind of at the midpoint, we're going to zip back to the, tur the tower because you guys want to see the interior of the towers as well. 
Thomas, welcome. <laughs> yeah, there were a few comments saying why I was why is a why is a British content creator streaming an Australian airport? But that's because we're one big international happy community, and you guys in Melbourne and Australia can share your opinions with us in the live chat and. Um, share your thoughts with us as well because certainly those of us who don't know about it are always really really wanting to hear what it's all like there's the interior with uh, it's almost like a, what we had on Microsoft Flight Simulator a little while ago continuous blue screens of death <laughs> looking really good and then just below us psh, the other tower SJ's asking about performance and obviously well, I've got the RTX 4090 so it doesn't really help much in relation to um, you know, assessing performance for you guys, I get that. Um, which is why I kind of avoid speaking about performance too much but all I've done in the toggleable options is I've switched everything on except for the 1000 plus cars um, smashed away at uh, in the car park so I've turned that one off. That's all I've done, and I'm going. I'm basically getting 60 frames per second in 4K with the RTX 4090, which is what my sim is capped at maximum. There's the fire training grounds. The 74811, yep, <laughs> yeah, 74811380. I do love fire training aircraft. They're they're weirdly mixed up together. NZA Simulations, welcome guys. Good evening to you. Great to have you on board. Love. All the work you've done, various scenery. In fact, you created Hobart, I think, wasn't it? For Australia? I believe. One of them, anyway. Not too far. Real world route from Melbourne as well, which will be great for this kind of work. Alright, let's go to the meat of it today, then. Hi, Cornelius. Welcome, buddy. Declan, welcome. As a Melbourne local saying it looks really good. Looks quite good. Uh, that furniture add on the landside bridge is very realistic. Seems like it stayed there for 15 years. <laughs> what do we want? We want three and it's usually about eight, isn't it? Look at that. And today we've got uh, painted by Demo Designs for our Osprey Airways Commonwealth tour. We've got our Commonwealth livery in use for today. Look at that. Various different patterns. Some of them based on themes around Africa and uh, Australian kind of Aborigine, all that sort of stuff as well, all blended into one one size fits all kind of um, aircraft paint scheme for today. Uh, we've also, of course, got right there for today the Australian flag. That's part of our. Well, that is basically for our Commonwealth tour for Osprey Airways, our channel's virtual airline. Eco says, did we watch the MSFS 2024 version trailer? We did. Very, very exciting, isn't it? But uh, at the same time, a little bit frustrating because it does fe feel like sometimes MSFS isn't finished. The terminal that we're at, we're at Echo 8 for our stands, and this is kind of the terminal that we've got to enjoy for our departure here. If I go to that fish eyes lens... I have no idea where the little MML when picture is going to be baked into the scenery. There's so many pictures kind of dotted around that I probably wouldn't be able to find it. It would take me hours. Cool, let's smash back out again. Want to have a look at some of these pilots flying along today. We've got Voz, Velocity, we've got an Osprey on the same stand. <laughs> That's a bit trippy, isn't it? Hopefully nobody's had anything, had it too much to drink today. There's a jet star on the runway. Nighttime in the terminals, Ellie's Fun is asking. Great shout. Great shout. Let's do that. What I'll do is I'll zip back to the aeroplane. So we can see from the outside looking in. There we go, look at that. And then we will change the time to night. I always go just almost night time, so you get this beautiful purpley power. Oh yeah, look at that, that's fantastic isn't it, really good. 
and we can even see our aeroplane. Look at that. The apron textures are really good here as well. So lots of light. We go right up and out for night time. Look at that. And then off in the backdrop would be Melbourne, the back left. So back to it's about there we want it, isn't it? Three hours to Hamilton Islands. We've also got part of the custom ground service equipment. We've got custom coaches and things as well that Orbex have put into this. You can see one there that's kind of waiting at that hold point, giving way to the truck. And they try to code it all to look as realistic as possible, but with obviously, um, you know, with the limitations offered by Microsoft Flight Simulator at the moment. One more section of the terminal to look at. This is Terminal 4, right? Yeah, we're code sharing for Jetstar today. And for Virgin. Next one along. Cool, we will keep going. Actually going to be departing late. My goodness, we've been at this for 40 minutes. Woohoo! Oh wow. Poke in here, have a little look. Live time is obviously really dark, so I've not gone to live time on purpose because uh, we want to fly into Hamilton Island and see the beautiful scenery. And we've got the freight terminal. Big old Qantas freight. I mean, the backdrop itself is just really nice, isn't it? They've done a great job of this. Um, Golf 44. Dina says, will you do a nighttime departure at YMML? I thought I was going to leave it daytime just because that way it can, uh, well, we can kind of see everything as we depart. There we go. The, the Terminal 4 interior is as it kind of looks as we've seen effectively. Um, there is elements of it and that's all it is. Yeah, the interiors that you get are all based on what you're going to see airside. So the elements of uh, where you're not necessarily going to get any interiors, you just you don't get any. Um, but the ones where you do, some of them are those kind of weird parallax windows that have got those incredible 3D textures on them. Uh, and again, then you kind of when you go into it, there's nothing. And there's Terminal 4's main structure. If we kind of poke our heads in again, you get to the end of that section, and then there's nothing except for this small little departures lounge section here. There it is. The stuff that you're likely to see from the inside, looking out. But look at that for a uh, look at that for a backdrop, folks. I'll grab a screenshot of that. That looks really cool. Pilot one, good morning. Okay, let's focus on today's flight then, because we've got to get our oops, uh, get our clearance as quick as possible. We are very late. Two hours fifty minutes or so um, flight time today. There's that Null Aero VDGS. I, know, I wish Osprey Airways was a real fl flight anyway, real airline anyway, at the best of times. But look at the detail there. If we have a look from the flight deck for the first time, we can see the departure lounge, 
We've got all the punters and the folks sat around waiting for us. Uh, it looks really good. Can we test the jetway map, he's asking, yeah, if you want. Again, we don't have a custom GSX profile, I don't think, but we'll click Operate Jetway. We'll see what happens. There we go. This gate has a default jetway. Doink. Connected. There you go. There's a whole load of other kind of bits of information that they've talked about as well, like uh, over 1,400 accurately placed street lights, working wigwags and uh, windsocks. Planning for a later update, Orbex have said that they uh, the T jetways they're currently not working anywhere except for Gothenburg. So what they're going to do is plan to have the same feature for Melbourne later on. There's our weights. Uh, we tune into ATC now as well, shall we? Ground 1217. We've got ATC for today. 1217. Go active with that. Uh, three, four, nine, five, six, Robex on. Uh, there is a uh, 7 3 behind you. That's uh, 5 for departure. And ATIS at the moment. If I bring it up for you guys, it's going to be runway 34. So this will be visible now. Information Sierra. We we'll write this down. Info Sierra. Squawk. Um, Q and H. One zero one one. Visual approach runway three four wind. What three five zero degrees at sixteen knots, and uh, visibility is greater than ten kilometers. About a few th uh, three thousand feet. Nice and easy. If we get rid of that jetway. We can operate that. Get rid of that. Uh, you can right, where were we? Over to tower, Qantas 111, see ya. So we're expecting the Nonix 3 to Nonix. Out of 3, 4. Initial climb is going to take us to over 10,000 feet. Um, and then we'll go through the rest when we get there. Cruise today, flight level 380. Let's get cleared. Uh, information Sierra, 737800 at Echo 8. Uh, Melbourne Ground, good evening, Osprey 165 Alpha, stand Echo 8, with information Sierra, Boeing 737-800, request clearance to Hamilton Island. Osprey 165 Alpha, good day, Melbourne Ground, you're cleared to Hamilton Island, by Nunix flight planned route. Runway 34, the Nunix 3 departure. Climb by the fit to 5000, squawk 4524. And departures 132 decimal zero. Cleared Hamilton Island, uh, runway 34, non X3, departure, initial climb 5,000 feet, squawk 4524, and departure on 1320 for Osprey 165 Alpha. Osprey 165 Alpha, I think. And Melbourne Grand Osprey. Lovely. So, and now everyone's like, boom, clearance. Yes, cruise 370, Doc, uh, thank you. Sorry, what did I say? 38. Uh, 7472 in taxi Golf Alpha. So runway 34. Runway 34. Non X3. Golf and Alpha and holding point kilo for Osprey 3472. Takeoff speeds can go in now. 147 out of the 10, 157. Push and start to prove. Flight director's on. Initial climb 5000, so let's set MCP. Uh, uh, device on tax to 90, uh, 90. For that. And 40. 40. So I've got five minutes to push before I incur a delay. Whoops. Um, where are we? So, weights, set and check. Transition altitude to 10,000. Then one limit, cell temp 44. Take off profile 1, climb profile 2. Using that airplane toolbox for our performance calculations today. 66.7. So I need to change the takeoff weight there. And Osprey and 495. So flaps 5, assume 44, take off profile 1, cruise, uh, sorry, climb profile 2. Pushback approved, behind the departing goes pretty 495. We've got to then recycle the speeds, 147, 157, still matches, adding the 10. And the runway heading is set to 340, same as the runway heading. 
that's set, that's fine, it's going to be an r -nav departure, let's have a look at the charts. So pushing us starting in the cul-de-sac pit Echo, we're going to face uh, westbound towards Golf, and then we'll just go for taxi instructions based on what we get, but we can expect to head eventually down Alpha, Kilo, line up 3 4 for departure north to Rockdale, 3 4 zero degrees, then uh, heading more eastbound on the Nonix 3 via Sally out to Nonix and then our routing will continue all the way across just north of Sydney passing Brisbane um, quite far to the, we the west of it and then up to Hamilton Island really really remarkable scenery by AUC uh, 5000 that's set that's set courses I'll just leave as it is order break RTO Melbourne Grand Philippine 1124 Airbus EC20 at Stanford and APU start Stop. One six requesting high flight altitude set. Wellington, uh, flight level three nine zero. Uh, runway three four. Just ex launcher. Prepare for pushback. Let's get our um, squawk set four five two four. The cause nine departure. Climb by the seat to five thousand. Squawk one two two one. And departure one three two stay small zero. Two four. Departure one three two zero. The squawk. So that's set. Arch set. Squawk set. Departure is set. Let's get rid of the charts now for you guys. Philippine one one two four is geared to Wellington via the. Got to change the cruise. Three seven zero is what we're actually meant to go for. Three nine zero. Uh, initial climb 5000, squawk 1221, uh, departure 132 And then that's reflected there. Philippines 1124, thanks. Let's pull the winds. Um, Just now a tailwind of 90 uh, knots MPS uh, gaming. Wow! Nice one. Uh, we'll be zooming to along to Hamilton Island. Well, that's loading. APU's ready. Osprey, one Lots nine, of multi tasking to do here. Golf. And then we can have a look at the APU gen. It's generating power. Ordinarily, wait a minute, but we've got to get that on ready. Packs off, isolation valve automatic, doors are closed, uh, pumps on and set as required. So let's get our pushback clearance, put the anti collision lights on, all brakes RTO. Uh, uh, ground Osprey 165 Alpha, stand Echo 8, fully ready, request push start. Spray 165 Alpha behind the departing company, uh, push is approved. Funny departing uh, company traffic, push start approved after for Osprey 165 Alpha. So that's done. That looks like we've got a custom GSX profile by the way, doesn't it? Because when we went up there a moment ago and selected the pushback, it said just pushback. There was no option of nose left, nose right. And that's because we're in a cul-de-sac. That suggests to me that we have got He's clear. That suggests to me we've got custom profile. Let's go for it. More chocks move. And clear left, right. Push back. Let's get the music muted. And everything else is set. We're going to go ignition mode ground for engine 2. Kilo via uniform alpha. Kilo. That's pretty funny. Here we go. Going off the 156 then, Nicole 5, the best of the start. That's very 156. Love the ground uh, textures here. Really, really good. Push that through, I'll see what's happening. Ooh, where's it going to take us? We only had one option for pushback. Oh wow, look at this, it's actually following the black line. Let's add the fuel. There's Melbourne from a pilot's perspective. Hello Sathira, welcome. Osprey 1964, you can contact tower 120, base more fire, see you later. 1205, that's going to be our next frequency. Thanks. There goes an Osprey. Here come the fire crews. Hopefully, they're going to give us a little uh, salute.
Wow, look at that. Push back perfectly on that black line there. Really impressed. I didn't expect that. A little bit off on the white line, but that's fine. If it's, uh, it's Virgin Australia ground cross, because if it's Menzies, I would expect nothing less. <laughs> Let's set park brake. Engine uh, one grounds. Let's run the bus for engine two. How the runway textures Paul's asking. Uh, we saw them a little earlier on, actually. Really, really nice. But we're going to head over to runway three four imminently and depart. So we'll find out how it works proper. Gen two's good. N two fuel control lever to run, and we're going to want the M one limit takeoff. We need to run the center of gravity there. 5.86. Justin's loving the livery. The liveries are all available on the website as well, BritishAvGeek.com. For those of you flying in Osprey Airways. And if you haven't seen it as well, actually, have a little look at. Uh, yeah, good spot. Good spot. Good spot. Windshield heat. There we go. On, on, on. Wait for the last one. That's good. Really good spot. I'd missed that. Engine modes leave us on to continuous. We'll pop the APU bleed off. Engine bleeds on. Packs on automatic isolation valves and automatic research fans. Good. We've done the probes and anti ice, uh, de ice. Not currently required anyway. Bumps, lights, and signs. Lap 5. System page. We're going to go full right on the stick. Full left. Is COM available for Flabber Wire? What do you mean, Justin? Back to centre, and then all the way forwards on the stick, back to the centre. Just make sure we've got proper controls. Again, those of you who use MSFS, I always recommend it on, on every stream. We discuss it all the time, but wiggle the rudders a few times, because you'll find that the first couple of pumps, the sim just goes, bam, maximum left, bam, maximum right. What that kind of does, wiggling it a few times, is it, it gives you... It reminds the sim um, where it's supposed to be. There we go. Osprey 165 Alpha, request taxi. Osprey 165 Alpha, taking taxi. Golf Alpha to the Kilo holding point, runway 34. Taxi Golf Alpha to the Kilo hold point, runway 34, Osprey 165 Alpha. The real deal, hello, welcome, saying thanks for showing Melbourne Jet Base, used to work there, taxi lights on, and it's spot on visually inside and out, great to hear. Someone was asking about frames per second counter. So at the minute I've got in 4K, DRAM's at 90%, frames per second 52 RAM 48%, GPU 54%, CPU 2%. Give you a based on an idea of obviously I've got an RTX 4090, but um, yeah, it is what it is. I think it's um, it performs a lot better than I expected actually. To be totally honest, I think they've done a remarkably good job of it. Oh. Start Broke fire service. Three, six, Leon, hello to you. Welcome. Uh, yeah, I get the point. I do get the point. Uh, no, ultimately, yeah. I, guess, well, I guess I, I spoke to them about it saying, look, are you looking at running any preview content? Um, so I, I kind of had a discussion with them. I don't know if any Aussie streamers have um, or not. I don't know. I don't know. But they've asked me to preview it. I'm really, really excited and honoured to give you guys that preview. <laughs> But it's also for me, you know, I don't know Melbourne, so for me I'm looking at it from a real open canvas um, and I'm relying on uh, so just say call sign again. all of you guys watching, wherever you are in the world, go for now, south is left, um, certainly those local to Melbourne, getting your opinions because it's a lot more important than what I think. That's why I know they, they used in their Facebook thing, uh, their Facebook post the word influencer, but I don't see myself as an influencer at all. Don't really like the term, to be honest. Uh, 
got to now if you can remain clear of the company pushing on your uh, right, be uh, because for me I'm just another yeah, member of the community of the who loves flying simming I just happen to production produce production content production. as I'm doing it that you know I don't see myself as a youtuber I don't see myself as a as a, an influencer certainly I don't particularly like that term um, I th I'm always here to hurt you know I'm always I always find your opinions more important than mine if that makes sense certainly if you are maybe tuning in for the first time and you've never really heard of the channel before it's really community based um, you know certainly Gav um, being Melbourne based himself and hearing all of you guys in the live chat getting involved too really really nice to hear a lot of uh, a lot of your thoughts and opinions as well as we taxi out and as we explored at the beginning doing it a bit differently as well because a lot of the time we fly into a lot of these sceneries to preview it don't we but I thought there's nothing better than being such a hyped release it is coming really soon we just haven't got a date set from Orbex yet but I thought it was really important for me to showcase it to you guys and spend the time on the ground before departing to really kind of have a look at what it's uh, what it's offering. Melbourne ground. Look at that. Good evening, Jetstar 541 requesting radio check. Paul, you're welcome, buddy. Jetstar 541, read you five. So, let's go out here a little bit. Have a wee look. What a Jetstar 541. That's really cool, isn't it? Look at the ground textures as well. Justin, yeah, we previewed, uh, really, really pleased to have previewed Hamilton Island from AU scene. Stunning, stunning scenery. If you've not explored that yet, really recommend purchasing it. It is fantastic. Exactly, Doc. Yeah, don't afraid to be unique. I think it's important yeah, that every channel offers something different. Contact Tower 125, uh, 1205 Osprey 165 Alpha, thanks to the ATC, good night. 125 Alpha, 156, thanks to the ATC, come back. I think somebody's got a very similar call sign. <laughs> I don't know, we're on tower anyway, there's. 15663 holding uh, Juliet Kiwa. Jetstar oh, maintenance okay. facilities there. Osprey 156 X-ray, runway 34 clip. 156 X-ray, my god. Yeah, that's confused me massively. I've changed frequency too early. <laughs> I will pretend like it's all fine. LNAV, VNAV, auto thrust armed. I forgot to do that after takeoff. Whoops, sat myself on the wrist. Fuel flow reset rate. Uh, we do a master caution reset and check. Lights and signs. So uh, we can pop the APU off as well. I forgot that. Yeah, look at this. Really cool. Let's go to that behind the wing look. Shiny and gold. Oh, Sam, it's yours. No worries, buddy. <laughs> Hopefully the ground controller isn't too miffed at me having changed frequency early. But there's nothing ahead of me anyway to cause any issues. Custom uh, hold point signs here and there's the wigwags for the first time visible. Ian's on his third wine. <laughs> Third bottle, I hope not. Hopefully third glass. Melbourne Tower, good evening, Osprey 165 Alpha is at Kilo, runway 34, ready for departure. Osprey 165 Alpha, Melbourne Tower, good day, runway 34, line up and wait. Runway 34, line up and wait, Osprey 165 Alpha. So, ding the crew, cross light strobe steady. Taxi lights off, runway turn off lights on. I'll whack the landing lights on now as well, anyway. Uh, probe heats all on, APU's off. Let's pop the transponder on. Doink. Look at those runway textures. Traffic mode on. 156 X ray, contact departures, g'day. 1320, wasn't contact it? Contact departure, Osprey 156 X ray, thanks for the ATC. We are busy. Wow, look at that. Really nice groove runway. As we said at the start, that's to dissipate any rain. Kind of like a flood mitigation system, if you like. Using physical features. Two towers in distance. And uh, really nice runway okay, textures. Osprey 165 Alpha, runway 34, clear for takeoff. Runway 34, clear for takeoff, Osprey 165 Alpha. 
just going to take a minute just to have a little look. Oh, look at that. A little bit of loading going on. Melbourne in the backdrop as well. The central business district. And those runway grooves looking really prominent. Those uh, white board denoting kind of the perimeter of the runway edges as well there. Visible. Really nice. Let's go to the control visualizer. Uh, that's all set. We're all good there. Shall we go? Let's head to the beach. So, holding on the brakes at 40%. Brakes off. Toga. Possibly for any favour of lifting uh, Power set. Thanks, Robert Randazzo. Runway textures look fantastic. Look at that. Wow, that's stunning. Releasing the nose wheel pressure through 80 knots. We've got rudder authority now. Here we go. Continuing the rotation as we begin to climb. Gear up. And then on the climb out, having a little look, saying goodbye to the tower. Following the flight directors. Yeah, runway textures are stunning, aren't they? Let's very quickly... Osprey 165 Alpha, contact departures now, g'day. Contact departure, uh, Osprey 165 Alpha. Have a good night, uh, thank you very much to the ATC. You too, thanks for the preview. G'day. So, nose coming down. I've released that early because I wanted to have a look at Melbourne from a distance. It will take a little while for it to kind of just kick back in again, but... Wow. Really cool, look at that. Lots of aeroplanes below us. And we say goodbye to Melbourne. Coming very soon to Microsoft Flight Simulator. Gary, welcome to you, saying uh, this is my hometown. Great to have you with us today. Melbourne uh, departure Osprey 165 Alpha, good evening, is uh, airborne 3,000 feet on the Nonix 3 departure. Rec RTO. Osprey 165 Alpha, Melbourne approach, very good evening to you, you're identified, climb by the SID, flight level 240. Climb by the SID, uh, flight level 240, Osprey 165 Alpha. Backpack. The uh, controllers giving us some ATC today. Really appreciated. So we've got uh, great to have tower, ground, and everything else online as well. Um, we've got, I think, not sure if we're going to be speaking to them, but we've got ML uh, YWE online, Melbourne Centre. Not sure if they're going to have that coverage for us or not. We'll find out shortly, no doubt. Climb via the SID flight level 240. So, what does that mean? If you're wondering, we'll pop back on the charts. We're away now. So, we are looking at any constraints. So if we we're flying through a Chimu, then we need to pass Chimu flight level uh, at 10,000 or above. For us, though, Rockdale, Sally, Nonix, there's no constraints. So we're just having a continuous climb up. Somebody was asking earlier if you recommend uninstalling Essendon, and uh, Orbex recommended that to me. So uh, it does seem like that is probably a good idea. Let's zip here. FMC legs. On to the legs page. That's looking good. Cabin's pressurising normally. Uh, confirm the frequency please for Osprey 419 in the centre tanks too. Doc, Osprey thanks buddy. Yes, there's still a few big airports, isn't there, for Australia that we haven't yet got. Cairns, Perth coming soon from um, import simulations. Usclavia yeah, says use this and do some GA and helicopter stuff in the sim. You could always leave them both installed and see on your own system what performance you get. That's always an option. Uh, it could be a really good option, actually, to be fair.
Qantas 261 life flight saying Williamtown would be good and uh, Melbourne a long time coming yeah, still no release approach, uh, good date, evening. but their Country product page says flying. you've been waiting Port for this one, Melbourne International Airport, nine. coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator, modelled by our Orbex team, led by Sasha Norman. Melbourne Tullamarine has been meticulously recreated from the intricacies of the terminals to the sprawling runways and taxiways and stunning landscape that surrounds the airport. And we saw that over the last 40 minutes on the ground, didn't we? Northwest of the Melbourne Central Business District and a stone's throw from Orbex's headquarters at Essendon is the second busiest airport in Australia. Tuller was expanded to, expanded to four terminals with 68 gates in 2023 with just over 40 airlines operating from the airport. It is the gateway to the buzzing and contemporary city of Melbourne. Uh, the next paragraph says we are proud to bring our second home to MSFS with every detail of the airport being carefully crafted as it captures the essence of the airport with precise runway markings, accurately placed signage and faithfully replicated buildings. Well, Hashtag why MML when? <laughs> yeah, still no actual release date. Oops. Getting sidetracked here. Got to go standard pressure light lights off, otherwise, we're going to get hit with a fine on New Sky. Tracking the flight for our Osprey Airways virtual airline. David's really waiting for Avalon after this release. Turn right heading 220, corner 7 Transfer, no, the Melbourne uh, in the backdrop had the city pack inside of it. So it was the our Melbourne landmarks pack from Orbex installed in the background. It works really well with uh, with Tullamarine. I was saying Mount Danandong or Dandenong off to the right. Is it really? I mean, you guys know what you're looking for, I don't. Uh, it's on this side, isn't it? Beautiful landscape. Mm -hmm. Encompasses runway tyre textures were interested. I haven't seen ones like those before. It looked really, really quite well done, didn't it? <laughs> I've missed it there. We're, we're way north of. Uh, Dandenongs. Unless that's and it off there. Good evening, in the backdrop. In fact, there's a mountain there, isn't it? Oh, literally on the horizon. Paul oh, saying Melbourne Airport looks better than Sydney Airport now. I can't believe I'm saying that. Question there, though, is are you on about the default Sydney MSFS or are you on about Fly Tampa Sydney? If you're enjoying today's live stream as well, folks, give us a little like naturally as well. Give us a little thumbs up. If you're new to the channel, it's great to have you on board. Do hit subscribe before you head off. Hopefully, you enjoyed that first uh, hour on the ground at Melbourne. Long time, but we had a really good explore of that new scenery coming very soon. A lot of you looking forward to it. A lot of anticipation building prior to its release as well. Block. Osprey 165 Alpha, contact Melbourne Centre 123.75. Contact Melbourne Centre 124325 uh, for Osprey 165 Alpha, thanks, good day. Class 811, turn right heading at 340. Well, he said 12375, didn't he? 340, corner 711. I think he said 12375. 34325. That's what I, yeah, that's what's on the frequency thing anyway. We'll go 134325. A little bit of turbulence. All pilots handling yo. Yoke giving us a wiggle wiggle.
Gav says you're about to fly over the Murray River. Are we really? Let's have a look. I'm there it is. So, Gav, when you went out um, for a couple of weeks away the other day, and you said you're out uh, out in the uh, yeah out back, I think it was, wasn't it, or in the in bush? Is that where you went? Spent a couple of weeks. Melbourne Centre, good evening, Osprey 165 Alpha is through flight level 220 inbound Casey. Osprey 165 Alpha, Melbourne Centre, good day, climb flight level 370. Climb flight level 370, Osprey 165 Alpha. And 156 Alpha, just confirm you're on frequency 123 decimal 75. Uh, I will change imminently. I'm on one three four three two five. One two three seven five. Pulse spray four ninety five. Climb flight level three zero. On ahead. Thirty miles on TCAS. Tenants Creek Gap. Very nice. It looked fantastic. I wish we had stuff like that in the UK. I mean, those those of you, you know, Ian and Gab and that, you know, over the last few weeks, they were looking at uh, making the switch to what's like moving to Western Australia. Me and Ian are but. I mean, we've kind of shelved the idea now anyway with things that have happened but it's always been this little burning thing in the back of my mind the desire to not only visit Australia but maybe one day move there as well um, so it's, uh, looks good fantastic Flix says flew from Paris to Toronto yesterday fell asleep woke up circling the airport at 40,000 feet whoops <laughs> thankfully you had enough fuel Tasfla, no worries buddy, have a good one. Good night. Mike says move here, you won't regret it. You know what? That, I've never heard anything bad. That's what everyone has said. Even even people who have said that you know, I moved here at, you know, 10 years, 20 years ago. People who are born and bred Australia as well. All saying the same thing. The UK is a train wreck anyway, so <laughs> it'd be good to jump off when it slows down a little bit. Let's have a look at Volanta, shall we? For the first time today, my goodness, what a fly along. Sorry, port 7 Alpha, Warren. Badger up front. Osprey 8656, in fact, all the way up front. Um, Northwest of Sydney already. 8320 Neo. Oh, MPS Gaming, Osprey 598, even further up. My goodness, uh, west of Tamworth. And Gav, Osprey 722, um, is west of the Gold Coast. Epic. So the fly along begins there, and then we've got a few. We've got one, two, three. There we got as well. We've got eight, six, five, six flying. Let's see what screenshots we've got so far from the others. Let's have a look. None from him yet. Badger was velocity nine one nine flying offline. Captain two velocity seventeen forty nine. Who else we got? Velocity 1749 is that same guy there. Uh, Ian, Osprey 2472. In the Osprey Holidays livery, love it. That, I almost chose that one today. There she is. Looking really good. Nice screen grabs. Uh, then we've got Osprey 1964. It always, it always keeps zooming out, doesn't it? Osprey 156 X ray as well, Sam. And Osprey 595. 495. Followed by us. Hot on their heels. Sato, Osprey 2306. Flying the 
FS Labs A320 on is it X plane? Brand new prototype for the Osprey always livery there for that. Osprey 645, a little bit of weather shown passing Melbourne almost. In the vicinity of the airfield anyway at least. Uh, center, Osprey, AW Aviation uh, uh, is just landed. James as well has just landed from Sydney. Velocity 326 off the Brisbane. And we've got a number of aeroplanes over there on the hold as well. Pilot Bibby 748. Graham. Osprey 596 Charlie as well. Epic. That's a really good flight. I love it, guys. I've got a couple of screen grabs. I've got eight screenshots. My goodness. Didn't realize I'd taken that many. I'll put them all on Blanta. They'll go onto Discord as well, and I'll, as always, pick a few and put them onto, onto uh, various uh, social media like Instagram and things like that as well. P3D for the SF, like FF's lab, Sato Epic. And there's a little airport. Benalia. Uh, or Benalla Airport, it says. According to Balanta. Good evening, Night Shepherd. Welcome. How's the jet lag now you've flown back to, the, uh, to Australia? Gary's saying it's a lovely place, Australia. Uh, Incomba says they move here, then go to the Boxing Day test at the MCG. Golski, beautiful country, Australia, with a huge variety of places to live. MPS Gaming's in a hurry. He's got to go to the Metallica concert later. My goodness, <laughs> you've kept your real, your your Sunday incredibly busy then for you. Ovens River coming up next uh, near Wangaratta. Do tell me off if I get the pronunciations wrong. I've, I've got a history of pronouncing certainly Australian towns and things badly. Uh, Absim's watching one of the most boring sports in the world, cricket. Don't kill me. Don't hate me. <laughs> I've never understood the scoring system. Give me rugby any day. Uh, or even American football. I've probably got into that. Yuki Sim going Melbourne to Ayers Rock. Alice Springs, of course, is a new scenery recently released. We had a look at that recently as well, a couple of weeks back, I think, wasn't it? Very, very good. Nice to have something basically quite remote to go and explore as well, but wonderfully made scenery. G'day, Lieutenant Riot. Musical Aviator saying the Murray River is the southern end of the longest river system in Australia, forming the border of New South Wales yeah, and Victoria. Wow, that's huge. No, not the Dolphins, Golski. The Patriots. But my second team is the Browns. I do like watching the underdogs. I'm glad I'm not alone with cricket. <laughs> There is a freeware for Melbourne Airport. I know MPS Gaming was using it today. I just don't know how good it is. It's certainly never going to be as good as uh, what we've just seen from Orbex, which is just stunning. Really, really good. Top of climb is not too far away. Centre tanks gobbling up the fuel. 0 0.8 tonnes left in there. And uh, everything looking quite good. There's a big old river. Look at that. that is, I'm assuming that's the Murray River, right? Wow. So we pop to the other side. Where's the river spit out? There it is. Goes off all the way to the distance. Meandering off towards those big lakes. And uh, there's the wind. 252 degrees at 81 knots. Woo. Night Shepherd saying that the um, Qantas have just announced a 2025 new A350 fleet for direct flights to the UK and Heathrow. We'll be saving up for that. A 19 hour trip, not, oh my god, 19 hours and one aeroplane. Jeez. I love flying, but I don't know if I could, I could tolerate that. Um, yeah, I don't know if I could tolerate that length of flight. 
Nah, they're off. You did just make me double check though. <laughs> we can take the seatbelt signs off though. All stations, Melbourne for now, closing one to you come and good day, enjoy the scenery. Cheers for uh, dropping on, giving us some ATC, really appreciate it. Have a good night. Have a good night, Matt. Have a good night. Have a fantastic evening, Osprey 2306. Here! <laughs> There's always one. <laughs> yeah, it's late for you guys in Australia, I appreciate that. And we've had uh, some controllers connect online to us from VATPAC and give us some really good ATC, so big thank you to all of you guys who have got involved. I've never done long flights. The longest I've done are tw 12 hours going to Tokyo and Seoul and Mauritius as well. And um, that is kind of the limit. 12 hours, 30 minutes in roughly is where I think you get to about 10 hours, don't you? And you think I could quite happily get off the plane now and stretch my legs and kind of actually uh, just breathe a bit of fresh air. <laughs> Nineteen hours. So I don't, maybe it'd be good. I think it depends on how they configure their aircraft, isn't it? That's, I assume it's part of this whole Qantas Project Sun Sunrise thing, as, as Lazarus has mentioned earlier on. Actually, I've just spotted that in the live chat. Where? Let me. Yeah, it's the double sunrise program. Yeah, it all depends on on how it's all going to look, really, um, with the way they configure the cabin, what they offer folks flying on board, as well. I suppose that's part of the journey, isn't it? Sam there saying that you know, non-stop, kind of taking the fun out of a stay over a little bit, to see two, two parts of the world in one go. But um, it's going to be yeah, premium and business mostly, isn't it? Because of weight and things. Luke saying the Qantas released the layout this week. Interesting. Let me see if I can dig it out. Sixteenth of June, the airline showcased its first looks. Oh, okay, let me get this up on the screen. I'm interested in this. I've all, you know, naturally I've always wanted, um, always wanted to visit Australia, but the price is so expensive. Which one is it? That one. Boom! There we go. Hopefully, you can see all of that without bits of it being cut off. Um, but there we go, yeah, A350-1000 is going to be going into service, and this is the cabin. What have we got here? I have no idea what to expect, this is the first time I'm looking at this. That looks quite nice. First A350 cabin, including a world first well-being zone. The entire cabin design of a specifically designed A350 that will fly direct from Sydney to New York and London from late 2025. It's not far away. Um, that's going to come as fast as MSFS 2024 is going to come as well, I suppose. Set to conquer the final frontier of long-haul travel. Cornelius, thank you, buddy. Super generous. Those of you who have enabled YouTube membership gifting, good luck. MG King, Tenured Amoeba, <laughs> and Andy as well, Caesarus, Amaron, and Brandon Ev. Um, welcome on board, folks. You guys have got a channel membership for a month, thanks to Cornelius. If you're in our Discord server, make sure you link your YouTube account with your Discord user account and it will get you access into our club lounge. Where you can sit back in a cabin similar to what we're looking at and enjoy a gin and tonic. Brandon, that's pretty cheap. I don't think for the length of the journey I could do economy though. That's the problem. 40 seat premium economy cabin and a 140 seat economy cabin really revealed today. We'll have the most generous seat pitches of any Qantas aircraft, ergonomic level and footrest systems and personal storage options. Sculpted wall panels and integrated stretch handles, guided on-screen exercise programs, a hydration station and a range of refreshments. That's quite cool.
52 business suites featuring sliding doors for additional privacy, high flat beds, large dining table, bespoke lighting and 18 inch 4K ultra high definition touchscreen TV. They've reduced the seats on board the A350 to 238 compared to 300 plus layouts of other carriers. I assume the ticket price for this is going to be like the Heathrow to Perth direct service where yeah, they put on an absolute whopper of um, an absolute whopper of a, a price tag premium on it because it's the only one that you could get. Docno BA operate the A350 1000 as well, just not in that, that ultra hot long haul configuration of course. Watch the fly through video here. Oh, we could do a picture in picture. Let's mute the music and listen to this one. A new dawn of travel. I mean, I would be interested. I've always wanted to go to Australia and New Zealand as well. It's been such a dream for years. Maybe I'll do that soon. I mean, if I can get on a plane like this, my God, maybe I would tolerate 16 hours, 18, well, 18 hours, did somebody say, or 19 hours. Looking really special, doesn't it? Sam, no, it doesn't. I mean, I'm loving the design of it, the kind of nice wooden effects as well, and personal storage. That's looking pretty swish. And I'd naturally, if I came to Australia, I'd have to visit Perth. Got to say hello to Ian. Naturally, I'd have to visit Melbourne, and I'd have to say hello to Cav, and I'd have to come and see, come and say hello to Sydney to all you guys uh, that have been with the channel for years in Sydney as well. That looks pretty swish. I do like the look of that. Honest business. It does look epic, doesn't it, Sam? How many of those headphones will get pinched? I bet loads. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the only real option at the minute viable is um, direct to Perth or you go to either a stopover in Singapore or Kuala Lumpur, somewhere like that with British Airways, Qantas, Emirates in Dubai, Qatar for Doha. Um, yeah, there are lots of options, but. This is a complete redesign of anything I suppose we are used to in um, in, well, in aviation just generally, isn't it? They've, they've taken seat space out to create comfort and therefore allow the range of the A350 to be extended. I wonder how many pilots you would need for this, like six maybe? You'd need relief pilots and then relief relief pilots, surely. And a dedicated area for the crew in the aeroplane. Not sure how comfortable they look. They look very thin, those seats, don't they? In, yeah, I mean, you've got that nonsense Global Airlines look, supposedly launching in the UK soon with a, an A380, which is, I don't think it's ever going to take off. I suppose, yeah, we could crowdfund an Osprey Airways for real. Just get one aeroplane. That's the well-being zone. Now that does look good. The emphasis here is going to be making sure things in that well-being zone, I suppose, remain healthy because a lot of um, there's a lot of a lot of kind of bad food on aeroplanes, isn't there? And certainly for these longer flights, getting up, stretching your legs, keeping the blood flow moving, eating well, it's all part of the recovery when you land. And the prevention of things like deep vein thrombosis and all that stuff. Which I guess is, that's been the whole thing about Project Sunrise. I'd have to bring the missus as well though, Gary. That's the thing. That's very exciting. 2025. I wonder how quickly the first flight will get booked up. Probably very quickly, right? But that does have me tempted, actually. Back to this, what have we got here. So we've got my QRH. Oh, that was from the last time we flew the 737. We had an emergency. And my checklist.
Economy both ways for Night Shepherd says honestly flew 14 hours on the A380 and 6 hours on the A330. The seats were pretty comfy and looked similar. What was the so the aircraft you flew on Night Shepherd? You flew was it Qantas on the way and Virgin on the way back, was it? What's your ETA to YBHM Transairs asking? It should be at the top of your screen, mate, I think. I can't see it. It would just be dependent on fuel and things, which uh, reminds me. We haven't done a fuel check for a little while. 0.33. No waypoints for a little while either. Muggy. So at that waypoint, we are expecting 7.3 tonnes of fuel on board. At that point, actually, we should have Sydney further east. But I'm not sure if it's going to be um, busy or not. Or visible in the distance, Sydney's going to be right off over over there somewhere when we do make the turn. Call us both times, Night Shepherd. Oh, the A330-300 to Sid, gotcha, gotcha, thank you, sorry. I had it in my head for some reason you'd flown on the A330-Neo from Heathrow to somewhere and then changed, so I don't know why that was in my mind. Luke Newman said he did the 17 and a half hour Perth to London flight and uh, it was honestly not so bad. And was that in economy as well then? Because for me I worry about, uh, you know, with what I do for work I've injured my right knee slightly as well. So I do get the odd pain, certainly when it's sat still for a long time. I get like a th shooting, throbbing pain in my knee. I've got to then be able to stretch it out and that's where I kind of need a bit of leg room and... and, and Premium economy certainly is really good for those longer flights, just because you get that bit more space. That's all it is. I think you could spend four, five, six weeks in Australia and still not have even scratched the surface. Mike saying Dubai is a nice almost halfway split of the journey. Singapore, I think, is kind of the main one, isn't it? Zingabil saying anyone interested in an Albury airport? A few there saying there might be. And uh, Blackout Stinger, good evening. Saying, just tuning in, that's the busiest I've ever seen Australia get on New Sky. <laughs> hey, you know what? Let's hope the traffic continues, though. It's an area of the world that I think for a lot of people in, in uh, you know, Europe and all that as well, and in the States, I don't think Australia and New Zealand is explored enough because it is, we fly here a lot in the sim on the channel and, and in New Zealand as well. And it is just really nice. And there are some you know, properly fantastic scenery available for it now, as we've saw. Justin flew Perth to Dubai, cattle class on the A380 and it was a nightmare. Same flight on the A350 was awesome, what an aeroplane. So. I'm assuming, Justin, you flew with Emirates, and that's probably the biggest mistake there, because Emirates A380s in economy are crammed in like sardines. If you if you sat on an Emirates A380 in economy, and then you got off that after two hours, and you changed onto a British Airways A380 and sat in economy, it would be like you've gone from Emirates economy to Emirates premium economy. It's incredible. The difference is insane. They just Emirates just cram everybody in. I really dislike their A380 layout. It is, they've literally turned it into an Airbus. Because they just, if they cram everyone in, it's profit. They don't worry about space. Aussie Aviator in Melbourne, welcome. Zane says he's lived in Australia for 28 years and still not scratched the surface. I think I'll be dizzy, I'll be like, my head would be wobbling left and right trying to work out where to go and what to do next. Luke says he booked the middle aisle hoping to get a couple next to me so they would climb over each other to get out and thankfully they did. That's the other perk to premium economy that I try and try and kind of go for because it's just then me and the missus sat next to each other. Gary saying, man I just think Qantas are dropping the ball. Engineers, staff, pilots, you name it, they're doing it wrong as Australia's leading airline. It's just disappointing to, to see their current state. I'm interested to hear what you mean by that because obviously we in the UK when we see their kind of flagship flight coming direct from Perth 
it always attracts a bit of attention. It's so you know, Qantas have got quite an exciting name here because it's associated with you guys being so far away in Australia in that magical world that most of us here would love to go and visit. When we see a Qantas aircraft fly in, it kind of it it does grow that seed that little bit more. It's got I don't know something magical about it. Um, it's the same when Air New Zealand used to fly into Heathrow as well. I do miss them. Um, they used to fly Heathrow to it was Heathrow to JFK, wasn't it? And then onwards to Auckland. Um, but every time that was in the UK, and you'd see the Air New Zealand crew walking through in their really unique uniforms, there was something special about it. Something quite magical about it. Again, as another part of the world that I've, I've just always, ever since I was a kid, dreamt of visiting. Gary says you would have so many people to help you out if you and your missus came to Australia, me being one of them. <laughs> it does sound exciting. Stop tempting me, guys. I've got to try and afford to go to Japan next year as a belated 30th uh, thing for the missus. That was always her bucket list destination, that. Mike's saying their Qantas are just so much more expensive than anyone else for the same routes. I think I would be inclined to do Heathrow to Singapore, Singapore to Sydney with British Airways, but then I'd be stuck in Sydney needing to then think about oh, how do I get to how do I get to Perth, how do I get to I'd be tempted to visit Hamilton Island just because I've flown in the sim and it looks spectacular in the sim doesn't it never knew it again it's a place, the part of the world I never knew existed until a U scene created the scenery for it and then I've, I've gone wow that looks great I really want to go there in real life at some point That's, I mean, that's a point, I suppose, in Compass. Yeah, we could do Japan and then zip off uh, down to Australia for... Mind you, it'd be like a week, wouldn't it? I wouldn't have enough annual leave. <laughs> or I'd never come back. <laughs> I'd end up on the run from the AFP as, a, as an overstayer. <laughs> oh, dear. You could do the train trip from Sydney to Perth, Night Shepherd said, what, what, what's that? Um, I, I assume it's not going to be, uh, <laughs> it's not going to be like the bullet train where it'll get me from Japan to Osaka in half an hour. Just to say, Alan Joyce is leaving Qantas in October, Vanessa Hudson takes over and we're hugely hopeful that she returns, turns things around. Do you, I mean, those of you in in Australia, what do you think of Project Sunrise? Do you think it's pretty good? Do you think it's exciting? Or do you think it's something that doesn't really need investing money into? The Indian Pacific. Luxury train trip. You visit a bunch of country towns and such thing. It's mainly for retirees. Hey, <laughs> I'm only 31. <laughs> Cheeky bugger. I'm Googling it now. What is it? Indian... Pacific. Mind you, I like I like uh, I like a relaxed holiday. Great rail journeys. There it is. Is that the one? Australia rail holidays. Ultimate Australia. Six thousand pounds. Seven thousand pounds for twenty-one days per person. Ultimate Australia. The Indian Pacific from Perth to Sydney. Jeez. So for 12 days, me and the missus, Mrs. Avgeek, that, that is uh, almost £9,000 for a rail trip. That's nearly as expensive as uh, going via train from London to Edinburgh <laughs> and back again. Wow, tailor-made. I suppose it's tailor-made, isn't it? That's super posh. That's the sort of trip, isn't it? You, like somebody said there, for retirees where um, what you would end up doing is blowing a whole lump sum of your pension on a big old holiday to Australia for two months. And uh, Alan Joyce has reviewed it as an amazing experience. <laughs> I assume that's Alan Joyce. Well, we'll pretend it's Alan Joyce uh, of Qantas fame. That's uh, a bit too expensive for me. Yeah, it's exactly, Empius Gaming. For you, that would be almost 70,000 Swedish kroner. 
Luke says, Perth to London is always full and it's only a couple of extra hours. I suppose it's because of going direct, isn't it, I suppose? Um, yeah. I suppose so, Ian, yeah. I suppose it's your you know, your version of kind of the trip from the you know, sailing out of uh, Dover to the fjords on a really posh trip away. Master caution fuel, centre tanks are empty. They're actually been empty for a little while while we've been discussing that so we can do a little bit of rebalancing just to keep things simple let's be preemptive of that or proactive with it we don't really need to but some of you might be watching not sure how to do it so we're going to turn the cross feed on valve goes open light goes to a, a kind of faded view we're going to confirm what tanks we want to turn off so we're going to go tanks on the left need to go off and we're going to run both engines on tank two so, aft one off, low pressure light on, check the engines, so we have confirmed that cross feed's on, and then pump one on. So now we've isolated pumps one aft and forward, we've turned those off, and we're cross feeding pumps two forward and aft through to engines one and two. So we're going to get fuel burn on the right tank only, as that gets to 3.87 we're going to flick the other pumps back on again check the engine instruments, make sure everything's all okay, and then we'll turn crossfeed off again. Night Shepard saying the Aussie dollar is weak against the pound, so you double your cash coming here. So, yeah, but the problem is that, that the booking there that we just saw, that is in pounds. So, you would then have to convert that into Australian dollars. Close cross feeds. Jolly good. 3.87 on both. Look at that. Pro pilots. Nathaniel, welcome. Uh, Orbex Melbourne isn't out yet, no. Aiden, the flight so far is good. Uh, lovely, Gary, thanks. Make sure you wash your hands. <laughs> My goodness. Sithira there saying, as an outsider, I think Project Sunrise is a bit of a miss, but it can be a hit as well. Seems like an investment that's not necessarily worthwhile. I suppose, in a way, Perth to London and back again is, is kind of like the tell, isn't it? The test on how popular... Project Sunrise would be in real life. Um, Luke earlier saying there that Perth to London is always full, so it's only a couple of extra hours as well skipped out from the changeover. I guess there, that's kind of its, its own proof in itself that you know, if they build it, people will come. I would look at spending... I, we looked at it recently, didn't we? I, I know, Ian, we had a discussion um, when I was looking at a transfer to Western Australia with work, with the work opportunity that came up where they, they're desperate for what I do over in Perth and uh, I did. I really really considered it and I thought you know at least maybe me and the missus visit first we get an idea of what it's like we can make that informed decision as to whether we make the plunge and we make the move to Australia and uh, yeah interesting I mean we priced it but I think it was at the time two three hundred quid per person extra to go direct with the Qantas service Perth to Heathrow and, and vice versa so it makes more sense to just do that and skip the extra little bit Oz Nomad in Perth as well epic a lot of a lot of folks in Perth actually it, you're, weirdly enough Australia um, is one of my biggest one of the biggest communities behind the behind the channel really uh, I wonder what the latest things are actually Bernie, good day. Loving the stream, he says. Uh, great to hear. Just started boarding passengers in Brisbane. We'll join the flight from here. Can't wait for the release day. And yes, I'm one of them who just joined New Sky. Let me log in, buddy. Um, it, it requires manual approval, so... Oh, no way. I'm one minute late. I'll push back. I'm going to get fined by New Sky. 
damn it. Hopefully we make enough profit to offset that. Fine. Oh no. Yeah, we're all up to date with who's uh, who's applied. Golly good. Yeah, we're not sure, um, Nathaniel, when Melbourne is going to release, but naturally they wouldn't be releasing um, any preview coverage if it was a little way off yet still. Um, I think they were hoping for this weekend, but um, I don't know, maybe next weekend. Fingers crossed. Who knows? Yeah, Night Shepherd. So I set... Um, 1040 Zulu for departure thinking we would spend 35 minutes 40 minutes max on the ground and uh, <laughs> we spent an hour on the ground instead hey ho much better though isn't it spending the time and going through it in good detail at the new scenery it is highly anticipated you guys deserve to know what it all looks like and see it as much as possible yeah Australia uh, make up the fourth biggest nation for viewers on the channel after Germany, followed by the United States, very closely by the UK. Pretty cool. After Australia, we've got Canadian viewers, Netherlands, France, Sweden, Spain, and Italy. They're the top 10. No, Aiden, there's loads of teenagers on that sim, buddy. All trying their best, all learning as well as they go. I know, Doc. Thailand and Finland. Should we find out where they are on the list? I don't know if it will show me on my mobile app, actually. Never really. I'm not good at exploring this stuff. No, it won't give me more than the top 10. That's frustrating. There we are. Anyway. You better represent, Doc. Get Thailand's stats up. <laughs> Otherwise, at that rate, yeah, Kiribati will be beating you. I think maybe Perth would be where I would end up going to. I've got, yeah, when I was going, when I was in school years ago, it's going back 50, 20 years now. Uh, my best mate at the time actually made the plunge with his, fa well, his family moved to uh, Brisbane um, and they went out to, to Brisbane they've been there ever since but absolutely loving it uh, I've kind of lost contact with him now but the last time I spoke to him we were just having the best time um, albeit you've got to start again you're starting life from scratch effectively aren't you and you're building something new for yourself but to have never visited kind of a bit too much of a big decision for us to make um, just out of a plunge, even though they made it very tempting, I guess. I think one of the biggest things was the fact that they were asking for us to apply, but then weren't going to help with resettlement costs. It's, it was like twenty, thirty thousand pounds just to move, let alone them buying a place and everything else. But certainly the Perth uh, or the Western Australia climate just seems stunning. Paul's asking, do you think we will get the Flyboy A3? 80 this year. No, I don't to be honest. I think I've always said haven't I, if it will come it will be at the very least maybe December but I'm expecting it in 2024 perhaps it will be released in time for Microsoft Flight Simulator 2024 <laughs> when that does arrive. Maybe that will be the Fly by Wire's first aircraft release for MSF 2024. That would be quite good even though it does mean that we'd have to then buy a new sim to enjoy it I think it's going to be, with the amount of really good high quality add-ons that are available in MSFS, it's going to take a fair while for a lot of these developers perhaps to adapt and update them slightly to make them work with MSFS 2024. So there is going for Flabawar A380 releasing around 2024 end of Q1 for his uh, guess of most likely release might be about right 
I was saying Queensland is lovely in our winter, but way too humid for me in the summer. Yeah, just like the UK, but winter's too cold as well. At the minute we're going through, we just had what they called an Iberian plume, which was uh, a lot of hot air coming from Spain, crossing over, uh, and basically s sitting over the UK, baking it in 30 plus degrees heat. But with us, we have a very humid climate as well, so it actually gets incredibly uncomfortable. I don't know, I'd be tempted. I still am tempted to, I think, at least visit Australia first. Uh, we'd have to visit Perth, no doubt. If we were to move somewhere, it'd be, if it was likely to be Perth, we'd have to visit to explore, wouldn't we? That would be the common sense thing to do. Yeah, you were really lucky, Night Shepherd, when you visited. So, Night Shepherd's just got back, by the way, folks, from a four-week trip to the UK, an adventure the other way around. Had one day of rain two days before we left. Yeah, so you got to see what it's like most of the days. <laughs> Many big bucks. Welcome, buddy. Thank you very much. Giving us ground control. Sorry, I think I misheard my call sign as well when you handed off... Is it Wattsbury 185 X-Ray? I think it might have been. I'm, I... I I transmitted and changed frequency as well and then just stuck with it <laughs> but thank you for the ATC really appreciate it and everyone else as well if you're in contact with them I don't know if they've popped into the live chat so far love a bit of ATC when we fly around I was saying winters are glorious here in the northern half, cold at night, but 30, 25 to 30 degrees clear, blue skies, horizon to horizon. Just sounds really good, doesn't it? Night Shepherd saying Scotland was our pick of the trip, drive through the Highlands and up to Inverness was amazing. Uh, and yeah, I've only been to Edinburgh in Scotland, but even Edinburgh's architecture is quite, quite remarkable, it's quite nice. Um, yeah, certainly the drives around the Highlands are meant to be truly spectacular, Night Shepherd. So I'm glad you got the chance to enjoy that uh, and experience that. Backpack guys are awesome, Bernie. Great place to start if you're looking to fly on Vatsim somewhere as well. Very chilled controllers. Very experienced as well. They all seem to know what they're doing. Oz, I can quite imagine actually. I've seen I've seen wonderfully clear skies in Mauritius, away from all light pollution and everything else, and it was just truly remarkable. Um, where I've moved to now, I'm quite well, a lot more rural than I used to be. Anyway, um, I, I, yeah, well, I probably would say I'm quite rural actually. I live near a load of farms. Effectively, there's very little light pollution, um, and the night sky is just stunning. Oh, don't you worry, Paul. I'm absolutely baking with my RTX 4090 pumping out tons of heat. Realistically, I need uh, I need some air conditioning inside the room, really. Ashton's saying there are too many snakes in Australia. I think that's the kind of thing that you would have to get used to, wouldn't it? You would be... It'd be one heck of a shock for me. Because, you, know, you don't see snakes here. Certainly outside of a zoo where you might see some really nasty snakes. Um, inside uh, displays and things like that, but I think I would absolutely freak out. <laughs> uh, Oz Nomad, though, by contrast, saying, been here 35 years, done heaps of outback travel, seen less than a dozen, and most of those were dead on the road. But what if you accidentally step on one, though, Sephira? <laughs> I'd be pretty miffed if I'd been stepped on. Luke saying I've lived in Australia my whole whole life and maybe seen one or two snakes in my 32 years. Amazing. I mean, I could ask the question, you know, those of you in Australia, because we've got a really good diverse bunch. We've got folks in Perth, folks in Sydney, folks in Brisbane, folks in Melbourne. Uh, we had Tasflyer as well in Tasmania as well earlier on. You know, I'd be curious to know what is the best place and where where you would recommend living, but you're all going to say wherever you live. <laughs> Ex-Hobart, now Melbourne. 
Nice. Not Sydney too expensive. But to be fair, that's I think that's what most people have uh, have said as well in the UK that have experienced Sydney. They've they've you know paying like no, the equivalent of eight to nine quid for a coffee, um, which is what like eighteen Australian dollars or something crazy. Could never afford that. I mean, one thing that I would really like to do. In Australia, I wouldn't actually be eligible to do because, from what I understand, the certain thing that I, would, without giving too much away, because it would give away what I do, but the you know, certain certain elements of jobs and things around um, Australia require you to be born and bred for certain things. So it wouldn't be I wouldn't be eligible necessarily for the thing that I would like to do. Right, Night Shepherd. Where did you pay £36 for a steak? Mind you, anywhere in pubs and restaurants, certainly in the UK, the prices are a little bit crazy at the moment these days. You could buy a bottle of wine in a restaurant for 30 quid, but then it's worth 8 quid. Ooh. Beep, beep. Oh, 1309, Alex! We've got ATC again. My goodness. E five zero inbound. The November Echo Romeo. Uh, yeah, so you've gone to Ireland. I reckon they've seen you come in and gone. Yeah, you know what? We'll add. Fun. We'll give him the special tourist menu. <laughs> I'll spray twenty four seventy two. Be fair, I don't know if that actually happens. But I've been to countries in the world, uh, like oh, Cyprus and things, today. places like that, where there are two menus, one oh, for locals, one on for yourself. tourists, certainly around Greece. Yeah, comply, mate. <laughs> How are we doing outside while everyone's doing their radio comms? Good evening, Everyone's smiling again. I'll just wait for it to calm down. Thank you, Mr. Said. Have you ever watched Australian football um, on TV? I haven't, to be honest. Uh, no, actually, no, I have once. I found it very confusing. Because I, I my brain was telling me that I was kind of watching. I was kind of watching football, but I was kind of watching rugby, and I was kind of watching NFL all mashed into one. I didn't know what the hell was going on. And Melbourne Centre, good. Evening, Osprey 2306 at 370 inbound. Wait, says live in Melbourne, don't live here. Our local government has destroyed oh, this once best livable city and a lot of that most taxed state in Australia. My god, Lazarus is half Australian here. Visit both Melbourne and Sydney. I'll choose Melbourne, they seem more chill, fits with my Greek side. And Osprey 2306 clear to Hamilton Island via Atmix Plan route, flight level 370. <laughs> Uh, flight level 370, Osprey, 2306. Velocity 1749, cleared to Hamilton 9, Valsalmi, plan route, flight level 350. Uh, velocity 1749, cleared to Hamilton 9, Valsalmi, plan route, uh, level 350. Someone getting their clearance? Osprey 2472, cleared to Hamilton 9, Valsalmi, plan route, flight level 350. I wonder if we've got Hope, oh, oh, uh, Hamilton Island, Atis. Osnoman says only two things that I miss good pubs and football. Paul, I reckon give it six to eight months, yeah, the RTX 4090 will go down in price a little bit. Christmas Centre, good evening, Osprey 165 Alpha is inbound, uh, November Bravo Romeo, flight level 370. Velocity, five My goodness, look at that crosswind. At the Star, five level, five thousand four, the velocity five zero nine, Melbourne setting at A, clear to Lake Control Air descending Gold Coast, no put it up, Arch Heavy. We go to 
have a look at why CHB. No. Uh, God, where uh, are we going? <laughs> why? Uh, requesting I'm out of Hamilton Island, the QH1016. Hold on. Osprey 578, Brisbane Centre, g'day. I've had a proper Stand brain fart. Why BHM? Runway tonight. Please. Uh, runway 01, right point. Osprey 578. There's the ATIS for Hamilton Island. Runway 14. Uh, 120 at 8. 21 and, uh, degrees, 1017. Expect RMP approach from Osprey. Was that 569 Charlie, sorry? Osprey yeah, So heading versus track, look at that. Our heading is actually 341 degrees. So apologies, center, no, g'day. our heading Stand is 336 up. degrees, is that dashed line, but we're actually morning. trekking 354 degrees three, six, four, five, because of that three, mega crosswind. Five, so so technically, Osprey six, four, five, center, our, g'day. our nose is pointing that way, but we're actually traveling over there where those contrails are. Osprey 8656, clear to Hampton Ironvale and knit its plan route to level 370. Seth says, I live in Melbourne but was born in Adelaide. If I had choice, uh, I would live there in Adelaide. Yeah, it's a beautiful uh, city. Island, yeah, I never really um, kind of looked into Adelaide that much. We've flown in and out in the sim a few times, look really nice. Contact uh, Brisbane Centre 134 Day Symbol 2, please. Probably 134 Day Symbol 2 for Osprey 8656, thanks to the ATC. Osprey 645, sending it a cleared to Hamilton Island, flight level 350. Clear Hamilton Island, flight level 350, Osprey 645. Where are we at? Center, About uh, halfway. Almost. It's a long old flight, this. I might transmit again because I wasn't acknowledged. Wow. Osprey 569 Charlie, Westy 1150. Osprey 569 Charlie, Senegade, clear to Hamilton 9 via Mudgee Planet, level 350. Luke Saintazi is stunning. And Golski as well. Christmas Centre, good day, Osprey 165 Alpha, flight level 370, inbound November Bravo Romeo. Osprey 1566, Race Centre, good day, uh, you're clear to Hamilton Island via Sunley Plan Route, flight level 390. Oh, was that for Osprey 165 Alpha? Osprey 165 Alpha, I uh, cleared Hamilton Island, uh, saw me flight plan routes and uh, to climb to flight level 390 across Osprey 165 Alpha. Oh, apologies, 165 Alpha, I've got you mixed up with 156 X ray, you can maintain flight level 370. Yeah, we'll go we'll maintain uh, 370 Osprey 165 Alpha, thanks. 1379, Here's a question for you guys in Australia. 1379 approved. We've got a show on the TV here called Married at First Sight Australia, and it's huge in the UK. Uh, I suppose again it's because of the fact it's in that magical land the other side of the world so it kind of pulls us in um, and it's quite good to see elements of Australia as well because um, there was a bit of Perth shown, a bit of, bit of uh, Sydney, Brisbane and everything else, a um, bit, of, bit of Tasmania shown as well, a uh, bit of Darwin in fact too. Recently. So I find it quite interesting to watch um, kind of Australia in the background if that makes sense but the missus loves it but yeah Max I want to know uh, I want to know what you guys think of Australia maths. there's a maths UK as well which is just rubbish it's awful that's because we're watching <laughs> we're watching absolute gutter people uh, representing the UK, but it's odd, isn't it? Because you know, we're then looking at it in Australia, thinking it's uh, it's it's quite good to watch. Yeah, Neighbours was huge in the UK, mega. Yeah, I think they still, uh, I think they still do Neighbours on Channel Five. I remember it going, I remember it going on. Uh, 
I'm sure I saw it on TV the other day. Is Neighbours on TV in the UK still? Run it through Google, see what it says. Oh my god, production is set to commence on a new season of Neighbours in early 2023 with a world premiere on freebie in both the UK and the US slated for the second half of the year. New outings of the serial drama will also be available to stream on Prime Video in Australia, New Zealand and Canada. And it's been on Channel 5 in the UK since 2008. My goodness. Yeah, I remember my uh, my my mum used to watch it all the time um, on Channel Five. <laughs> Hello, Alex. Welcome. Thanks for giving us some ATC. <laughs> yeah, Gav. Yeah. Uh, well, that's going to be in my head now. Quite, yeah, unfortunately, Coronation Street is still going on over here, and Emmerdale and EastEnders. Uh, there's a tax for everything, Night Shepherd. I don't know if you guys have got inheritance tax and things like that in Australia as well, but there's even like mega taxes on death as well. Loads of tax on death. 40% depending on the values of the estate. Insane. You pay tax your whole life, you then get taxed on your pension, then you get then the people who are in, inheriting the estate get taxed on your death. <laughs> it's, it's mad. I don't know who Ina Sharples and Minnie Coldwell are. Basil Brush. Yeah, what do we have? Oh, what did I have growing up? Basil Brush. Um, Blue Peter. The uh, what are they called? Teletubbies. Brisbane Centre, Ross City, five zero nine out five nautical miles away from runway three two. We'll see 509, uh, no requirements, just call me on the ground. We'll call you 509. Bill and Ben, Dick and Dom in the bungalow. <laughs> oh god. The thing is, when you watch them back now, you, out of curiosity, when you watch them back, you think, my god, I can't believe I watched that, it's bloody awful. Right, Arnav Yankee is what we're going to want. Andy Pandy. Farm and Sam as well. <laughs> oh, utter trash when you think about it. Alright, we've still got a long old way to go. There's our little magenta dot. Look, we're barely even halfway. November Bravo Romeo is kind of our halfway point. Big old journey this. We look at the flights though, we look at the arrival. So we're VFR conditions into Hamilton Island. Expecting runway 1 4 with a 3 knot crosswind and a 5 knot headwind at the moment. But obviously, that could change. Boss and we're going to have an Ovron transition for the Arnav Yankee, which will look Oxprey like 19, that. 64, Brisbane Centre, g'day. Uh, you are cleared to... So we're going to fly... Ovron, there it is, just over the airport. Arnav Waypoint, which will approach fix at 4,000, stepping down to 3,500 at Hotel Mike, 348, uh, I'm oh, sorry, 843, my goodness. And then we'd be arcing back round on ourselves to then fly final approach from Hotel Mike 841, 135 degrees inbound to runway 14, and kind of fly that last seven, little eight, bit. PBC read back. Let's press last 7 8, go ahead. Uh, PBC read back, uh, ACO 1 departure. Uh, HM841, minimums 1,500 feet. Eight, uh, uh, what have we got down here though? Let's pray 5 7 8, thanks. So we can achieve a climb. Climb gradient at 4.5, so minimums for us it's going to be 550 on the barrow or pressure altitude. We can pop all that in. So on our Yankee 1 4, transition of Ron, no stars, execute. On the legs page, we've only got a few more waypoints. Look, Sol me, then 391 miles to knit it, then 81 miles to Ovron. Actually, I want to be at 4,000 uh, 4, by then. So we'll change that and we'll change this one to at 8500. Apologies, can I grab the call sign again, please? Osprey 8656. We can load the forecast in for the descent. We need to do the transition altitude, Osprey flight level 110. 
Approved. We'll report when back to uh, Osprey 8656. Okay. Execute. And uh, what was that meta again? Well, YH, no, YB. Osprey 578, request push start. YBHM. In the live chat. Add some welcome on board, thanks for subscribing to the channel. There's the meta, 1017. Shouldn't change much. If I put it in as a preliminary. That'll just help sort our top of sent out a little bit there. So the arrivals are done, we can put a fixed ring in. Using the charts, what have we got? 135HM841. That's at 5 miles. So we'll do a 5 mile fixed ring. And uh, yeah, 10 miles, that'll do. So, runway. One four five miles ten miles easy peasy when we land we've got to think about all of the gump so even um, backtrack as well landing on one four we've got beautifully scenic approach over the bay past all of the uh, the marina and everything on the left but um, we're going to be working hard to break and and slow down. We'll then have to turn at the bottom of 3-2 and then backtrack vacating at Bravo into the uh, main apron area here. Um, we've got a custom GSX profile installed for this. Really nice AUC in Hamilton Island with a great custom GSX profile. That's going to give us beautiful deboarding into the fantastic terminal area. Dark Fury, welcome. Hope you're well. So the length of the runway means that we need probably like four or five minutes separation between um, the arrivals and the departure. Well, the, yeah, all of the arrivals, in fact. Otherwise, it's going to get messy. Thank you to everybody so far to hit the like button as well. 115 likes from what I can see. Great to see. Um, if you are, by the way, going to Flight Sim Expo this year, or you fancy some merchandise, channel merchandise at a discounted rate. We've got 10% off at the moment via our merchandise shop. And for that, you just got to go shop.britishavgeek.com. Loads of really cool, unique products. And uh, you can get 10% off just for the rest of today, when it expires, using the code FSEXPO. So you probably, I mean, there's only about five, six hours left of that code, roughly. If you're going to FS Expo, it'd be a great way to represent the channel with some really cool merchandise. Or alternatively, if you're not going to FS Expo, the chance to dip, basically dive in and help yourself to some merch with a little uh, a rare sale. Is it easy to land at Hamilton Island? Paul is asking. No, pretty much. Um, it, it's, it's basically like the Skiathos of Australia. That's how I described it last time. I think for, uh, we did, didn't we? It's like the Skiathos of Australia, which is why we picked it for an arrival route today, is because it is quite spectacular. Uh, or, if you're Australian, you could describe Skiathos as the Australian Hamilton Island. Short final, 9099 saying, no tax on pensions, no death tax in Oz. Wow. Yeah, I mean, there's loads of crazy taxes for all sorts here. The commentator says, I met an American guy in Greece who studied in London. He said he loved British banter and Coronation Street. Oh my god. The banter I can get. Coronation Street, not so much. Bloody awful. <laughs> Andy, good work. My goodness, sorry, actually, I think you put that earlier on as well. I missed it. I do apologise. The live chat's been busy today. Um, Andy's saying there he's delivered one of our... Uh, Osprey aircraft back to Heathrow yesterday after visiting all the Commonwealth countries and shunting it across the Pacific from Fiji to Belize via Honolulu and San Diego. My goodness. So you've done the full Commonwealth tour, including the hop across the Pacific. That's remarkable. Well done. That's a top, top effort. I was saying there the state pension is means tested, unlike in the UK. Hmm. How do they means test it though? And certainly as well, if you were to you know, say, for example, you take me uh, and my uh, Mrs. Avgeek and, and we plonk ourselves over in Perth to go and make the move, 
how does that then affect us if we are expats then living there when it comes to things like retirement and all that sort of thing how would that work encompass no but I'm sure you can teach me some I'm sure Andy that's a proper good adventure how was the scenery it's like 58 legs for the Commonwealth tour Mike says you can get your UK pension paid in Australia see I, I read about that but I didn't really know how it worked and it sounded quite convoluted Have I eaten any Vegemite? Justin's asked. You know what? Yes, I have. Um, in a ration pack with a load of crackers. Wasn't great. <laughs> but there's this tiny little tube of Vegemite in a rat pack. Just tasted a bit like Marmite, to be honest. Seth says his dad gets part English pension, part Australian pension, about 2080. Interesting. Yeah, it's all quite confusing, really. And then Oz there saying that pension, though, will count as income if you apply for Australian state pension once you become either a PR or citizen. How close are we to these? My God, we're only 10 miles separate. Yeah, Zato, we've still got the same, man. We've got a mad 150 knot crosswind. Whew. Andy saying Africa was rubbish, Pacific was okay, the Caribbean so so. Few airports have had runways updated in real life, but MSFS in the dark ages still, yeah. One of those things, isn't it? I have to change my predicted landing weight here. What do we got? Auto brake max, full reverse, and stop margin of 519 meters apparently. I always find Vass Airplane Toolbox to be a little bit over the top though. We always end up a lot quicker in stopping than, than we intend to. Seth says his dad immigrated from England in the late 60s and how has he found it? If you don't, I suppose it's interesting I guess. Yeah, Lazarus, no worries. I guess, with separation-wise, what we probably will have to do then... Alex, the controller at Brisbane Centre, might know. A bit more. There's no holds, is there? Is there a hold at Ovron? Would we hold at Ovron over the fields? Hmm. Because the next waypoint is all the way down there at Nitit, so there's no hold there. RMP Yankee. What other approaches are available? So now we're having to actually think about. Um, Osprey 578, runway 01, right, reporting fully ready. Osprey 578. Oh, none. Yeah, runway we'd have to right. hold over over on then. Uh, yes, right. just Please insert one. There's a hold on RMP Zulu, as Sam says. 
Andy says they don't have holes. That's a good point because there's never enough traffic in real life. So we just have to work out what to do then, really. Yeah, that's a good point. Brandon there saying with the wind you should check out the other aircraft contrails. And we can see them in the distance over there. So they're flying the same route as us with the same heading and track. So the wind's going basically straight in from that through the plane back down that way at 150 knots. So we're pointing over that direction. But we're actually travelling towards those guys there. That's our track. But you can see how it's now also affected their contrails in the sim which is quite it was actually quite remarkable to see really because they're flying off in that direction as well but the contrails are being blown with the 150 knot crosswinds max cruise speed currently uh, negative i probably can go up um, a bit more i'll say 2472 you have to do that for me just let me know what your muck will be please yeah hey, fam. i'll uh, increase speed and i'll get back to you Uh, Osprey 578 airborne, passing 1,500 for 6 hours. Osprey 578 departs, get a uh, identifier, track shortening available. Uh, love one, thanks. Osprey 578, cancel the SID, turn left, direct tap at climb spot level 240. Cancel SID, turn left, to direct tap at climb to flight level 240, uh, Osprey 578. We'll see 509 is shutting down. Good night, everyone. Brandon's just behind us. Good night. Can't see your controls, though. You say just behind us, but you could be just behind us by like 50 miles. There he is. There's the other two sets of controls. So if we draw a straight line, that that's our direction of travel, right? Straight line like that. So. They're the other two guys behind us at the moment that we can see at least directly behind, flying the same track, the centre line, just draw a big line through the middle of your screens. But our nose and their noses are pointing half into the crosswind, but their contrails are also being blown off in the distance as well. So look at our contrails and how they're being affected by the crosswind. It's quite incredible. Uh, requested uh, point eight one, and I think Pretty cool, isn't it? Thanks. So and it's great to see the controls actually interact with the crosswind in this way too. Love this livery. David Designs created it. One of our bespoke paint schemes on his commission on uh, on Fiverr. If you want custom liveries, by the way, Damo does do them for a small fee. And this one is based on beginning at the start there. The UK, every single country in the Commonwealth that you will fly to on our Osprey Airways Commonwealth tour. The little line goes under the tail. Osprey 495, kind of prison center on 34 days, small two. All the way to the other side, zipping all the way around the world, finishing finally in Canada before returning underneath the plane back to the UK. Really cool. 1342 Osprey 165 Alpha, thanks uh, for the ATC. Good night. Say that, but we're still going to speak to him. Christmas Santa, good evening again. It's Osprey 165 Alpha inbound, saw me fly level 370. 165 Alpha, say day. Osprey 645, set up. Osprey 645, yeah, go ahead. Osprey 645, correct, Brisbane Center 134, decimal 2. 134 decimal 2 seals. Osprey 645. See you soon. Osprey 2306, connect. Prison center 134 decimal 2. 134 decimal 2, Osprey 2306. Bingo. 
Like I say, the southwest around Dumfries and Galloway is beautiful and slightly less harsh winters. Hamilton Tower will be busy vectoring us all in for landing, absolutely. Alex, uh, our Brisbane centre controller further up in the chat saying, you guys are all vertically separated and an easy 13 to 30 nautical mile difference. Ben, ben, Melbourne. Okay. Brisbane centre, good. Good evening once again, Osprey 2306. NPS is in descent Osprey already. My god, we've got so far to go still. Three, four days, two. Uh, that's affirmative, 134 decimal 2 in our uh, radio box right now. I just have you coming in on 130 decimal 9. Not sure what's going on there. Yeah, I don't, I don't know either. Uh, but yeah, when we're at uh, 134 decimal 2 right now, after 2306. Oh, easy. Center, hello. Osprey 6, 45, flight level 350. How long have you got to the Metallica concert, NPS Gaming? Brisbane Center, hello. Osprey 495, flight level 350. Osprey 495, sending day. Osprey 156 X-ray center. That's not us. So, I mean, you guys might be wondering when the next live stream will be, and the answer to that is I'm not really 100% certain. I was hoping for Tuesday. That's the day that um, my big fluff Loki goes in for his major surgeries, his hip. Sorry, say again. Revision surgery to What's repair your, uh, the garnet kit that's you failed. To increase to? Um, he's going to then need, when he does come home, he's going to need round the clock care. But on Tuesday, I was thinking but I'll Matt, stream, eight, get my uh, head away all, from uh, worrying about the dog and all that sort of stuff. Eight, but one. those of you who have been part of the channel for a little while now, certainly some one, of the five, channel six, members eight, as well, we, we've eight, one, kind of discussed it in the club lounge. But eight, one, nine, um, one, with my mum, eight. my mum's funeral was on Friday. Uh, so, you know, this is a really good way of me keeping the energy up and, and, uh, yeah, yeah, keeping keeping in a good mood and all that sort of stuff as well. It's really exciting and to share all of this with you with the Melbourne preview. I've got to have a massive thank you to Orbex for that as well, um, of course, naturally. And those of you in Australia for allowing me the opportunity as well, I guess, uh, tuning in and, and enjoying the live stream with me and enjoying that preview, offering your thoughts and everything else too. Um, Orbex have been quite flexible as well. I was quite transparent with them to say what had happened. Um, and that my availability was going to be severely limited, effectively, because of because of it. Um, but on Tuesday, I was thinking I was going to stream, but I'm going to have to go and help my brother at my mum's house again and uh, zip back up, uh, deal with a whole load of stuff up there at the, in, in another part of the UK, effectively. Because I grew up in the Midlands, uh, and obviously I doubt I actually live near towards London um, now. But I can't let him do everything. There's a whole lot of renovation, repairs, and things like that re required. Classical sheet music. Hello, how are you? Sam says, does anyone know why my hydraulic pressure is 72 uh, in, in System A and B is uh, 92? It, it'll be the j just a kind of the slow degradation of your hydraulics. You're using hydraulics all the time and li little bits like that. You can, if you want, Sam, because we had it on the last stream. It actually became a a, a, a low hydraulic pressure sort of pan pan. Uh, the first pan pan that we've declared on the channel, actually, as well. But you can, if you want to, go into here, go menu, ooh. FS actions, nope. PMDG setup, aircraft failures. Go to all systems and see if you've got any failures active because you might be able to repair them. Failing that, FS Actions, where is it? It's not there. I don't think where it is. There's a way to refill the hydraulic pressure. Um, but you'll notice 
mine's slightly low in system A quantity is 80% B is 100 but it's the pressure that you want to look at the most what's your pressure Sam on your hydraulic system if it's around 2980 2950 or so then that's fine if it's lower then just let us know what the number is if you get any master cautions come up for hydraulics Okay, so you've got an active fault. So, Sam, on that basis, I don't. I wonder if you've got the same fault that we had on the last live stream. Where we had a failure. Uh, Do you have auto brake disarm uh, illuminated? Look at this. We're troubleshooting Sam's flight live. Oh, you don't. Okay, so it's a developing fault. You can either leave it. And when you get to Hamilton Island, run it through maintenance and, and get it all replenished. Um, or, well, yeah, or go well, or you could just reset it and prevent the failure, I guess. But that's why I always fly with a QRH. We had it on the last live stream where our faults A system quantity refill required fault came up. We had low hydraulic pressure. The auto brake disarm was stuck on. So uh, what that meant is we don't have we didn't have the opportunity to let's get rid of these to actually have any kind of auto brake function. So we had to go down and find the failure in here, auto brake disarm here, and then follow those steps. That's what we had to do. But if you've got no warnings as of yet, that's fine. The failure will be in the background because it's generating that now actively as a failure. So. The good thing is you've actually spotted the hydraulic difference. Therefore, when you land at Hamilton Island, you should be able to um, just get it refilled. And you can uh, refill it by simply disconnecting, uh, or like clicking that active failure as a repair five, refill. Five, seven, eight, uh, Crazy say hello. One, I don't zero. use FS Realistic because zero, five, FS seven, Realistic eight, is actually very unrealistic. Unless you're flying things like the PA-28, those small aircraft, um, general aviation type aircraft, that's when FS Realistic can be quite useful. You, even then you end up turning a lot of the settings down to near zero. On uh, In an airliner, it's woefully unrealistic to the point I've uninstalled it. So I don't recommend it personally. Save your cash, spend on something else. That's my two cents anyway. There might be some other people in the live chat who've got a different opinion though. They might think FS Realistic's really good. If that is you, to, you know, share your thoughts in the chat as we fly along.
Incubus says, uh, I use FS Realistic to add a little bit of movement in the cockpit and on landing, not to be realistic, just to add a little something. But that, you think you, know, you just add a little bit of movement. So what you've done is you've paid money for an add-on that then you, you've turned a lot of the settings down, right? That's I found that I was nearly turning them all down to zero, which is just pointless. Um, Crazy Zay says, since you're using an RTX 4090 or a 40 series card, I assume you cracked all the settings to ultra. Yep, I've got an RTX 4090 graphics settings video on the channel if you wanted to have a little look at that as well, so it can, uh, you can see what I'm running, basically. Bernie says, hey Luke, if I was to win the lotto and get an RTX 4090, what wattage power supply would be the minimum? I've got a 1200 watt power supply, um, which is mega. But it gives me enough of a, um, a buffer, effectively. Millsy saying, hello, uh, how much storage does Orbex Melbourne Tullamarine require because I'm really running low on storage. Uh, let me find out. Doesn't show me on the product page. I'll put the product page in the live chat for you because it is it has been generated in preparation for its release. And while it, while you have a little look at that, I'm gonna find out how much the scenery is installed. Bear with me. Why MML? Properties. So fully installed, it is 6.61 gigabytes. Fully installed. That is with um, one. That's with everything toggled on, except for. One item, which is 1,000 plus cars in the car park, which I toggled off purposely. They also recommend uninstalling Melbourne Essendon to help with performance, but it depends on your system spec as well and whether or not you can do it. They've got a whopper of a crosswind. Yeah, so in the Orbex Central program, Millsy, you've got that configure button. And there are about 15 or 20 different configurable options, which is good. Lots of ways to kind of personalise it based on the system that you've got. Over 155 custom made taxi signs, apparently. Densi placed it custom made ground service equipment vehicles and other apron clutter with more than 2,000 placements, even with little details like interiors, Victoria license plates, etc. Seth, yeah. So today I've I've kept Mel the Melbourne Landmarks pack installed, but I've uninstalled Melbourne Essendon based on recommendations from Orbex for me. Um, I was very tempted to leave it installed because, in theory, with the RTX 4090, it should be able to handle it all installed at the same time. But um, I figured I'd uninstall it. I'd basically I'll just do as they they've recommended. Don't know how much it's going to cost yet, Bernie. I'm not entirely sure how much, or what, like when it's going to release either. Um, oh, hold on. On the product page, orbexdirect.com/product/ymml-msfs. That link that I put in the live chat a moment ago. Can you guys see a price on there? Because I think I can. that. No price for you yet.
I can see a price, but I don't know if it's going to be the final actual release price. So if you guys can't see the price, I won't I won't mention it because it might be entirely different. Um, might be higher or lower than the one that I would be about to kind of mention. Pete says, I turn the cars on and spend three hours walking around the car park for realism. I live here. Alright, cool, yeah. So you can't see the price, so I won't mention it just in case. Melbourne, Oz. So, we discussed performance on the ground, um, Seth, when we were exploring Melbourne. We had... Um, this is a... a we had Melbourne Landmarks Pack installed and Melbourne Tullamarine um, but we had uninstalled Melbourne Essendon and when we got the PMDG pushed back and running with GSX actively doing stuff as well and GSX can take a few frames can't it uh, it drops to about 52 frames per second with me and that's running it in 4k with frame generation on and everything on ultra with the RTX 4090 and that's on VATSIM with what was it, 10 or 15 people flying flying along as well and, and uh, populating the airport so it's pretty busy at the beginning of the stream before we started to even worry about GSX it was at 60 frames per second in 4k but they have said it, it, it depends on the systems that you've got really but it could I'll be performance five, heavy I mean, they said to me, uninstall Melbourne Essendon because it might be a bit of an issue with performance with uh, Melbourne Tullamarine, Essendon being so close as well, and the landmarks pack in the background, plus them being on VATSIM and all the rest of it. But I actually now, part of me thinks, wishes that I left Essendon in because, um, but yeah, because effectively I, I, didn't, I didn't notice any performance issues at all um, today. Seth, yeah, and the other thing is there are multiple options for you to be able to kind of turn um, various different features off within within the uh, within the scenery. So if you found that, say for example, 10 or 50, you, know, you would, I don't know, say for example you were running at 1080p on a kind of like a mid-range system and you were struggling to get 30 frames per second, you could turn off a couple of the resource intensive features that are toggleable inside the configure button on, um, on Orbex. Um, on Orbex Direct uh, or Orbex uh, Central. PMTG are working on a Max, but they're going to be releasing the Triple Seven first. I think then the Max, then a Seven Four Seven, possibly Lazarus. Paul's asking, is GSX Pro worth getting at all the early bugs fixed? So, GSX Pro will and continue to need, um, will need and continue to need custom profiles to make it work really well. It seems that the Orbex Melbourne, it does look like there is a GSX profile that comes inside of it already, which is really good because we had a custom pushback. Out of the uh, out of stand Echo 8, didn't we? We had a very custom press one Shall done really, really good. well. So uh, Bravo, on the ground, uh, that sort of thing, you're going to get a really good experience from yeah. GSX. Uh, do we need the clearance here? Or are we under control? Bravo, Charlie, do that. Stand by. Yeah, Bravo, Charlie, do that. You'll be me. Squawk four zero five one, Rockhampton class Golf, no port, I fight traffic. 
Four zero five one nine, Bravo Charlie Joy. Bravo Charlie Joy, did you have a runway at all? We are taxiing uh, runway three three. Bravo Charlie Juliet. Oh, let's uh, hope so. Thanks. Report at the holding point four clearance. It seems their next Bravo aircraft Charlie, is going to be that A three thirty Neo. Uh, I would put money on it being released we'll, um, at the same we'll time as ground, so MSFS twenty twenty four, that Aerosoft A three thirty Neo. That's just me guessing. It's very convenient that all of a sudden there was an A330neo in the trailer um, a week after Aerosoft had mentioned their next aircraft is going to be an A330-900. But who knows? Who knows? Mike there saying as well to Paul about GSX, if you like your airliners then GSX certainly adds to the immersion. According to them that know on YouTube the early books have been sorted. I don't have any issues. Yeah, I don't touch wood have many issues myself but again it does require you to have those custom profiles Bernie have a good night buddy saying be nice to Cooper on tower at Hamilton he's already been online for over two hours have a great flight thanks for tuning in Sam why do you need nose wheel steering as it failed it's there you can flick it between alternate and normal. So if you open the guard, you can flick nose wheel steering to the alternate mode. Well, hey, top of descent coming up. 180 nautical miles, roughly. Still got a 126 knot crosswind. So there's the other guys. They're cross. They're sort of contrails going sideways across the sky. Uh, Sam says he's got low pressure warning running through the QRH now, nice. So talk us through what you're doing. Have you got low pressure up here on the hydraulic pumps? That's the big question. You might have uh, LX2A hydraulic a low pressure or you might have hydraulic um, engine one system A low pressure. That's a big, that's a big failure. That's a pan pan. So those of us with service-based failures on with PMDG aircraft who have kind of had it installed for a similar length of time, we might all now, like we did on the last time we flew the 737, we might all begin to be getting these um, to be getting these uh, hydraulic system warnings. So Sam is running through a loss of system A. Is it a complete loss of system A? Engine one and elect two. That'd be more squeaky bum than what we had. So that means then you've got low pressure hydraulic pump system A both. Or standby. <laughs> yeah, bugger off. <laughs> Hold on, let me can't find the right bit again. Bravo, Charlie. Juliet holding point uh, on my face. Right? Bravo, Charlie. Juliet, thanks. Clear test for uh, departure, runway 33, climb bottom 260. Here's for departure from 33, follow 260, Bravo Charlie Joy. Unless you'd like uh, the Rock Camden 3, it's up to you. Right, so this is what uh, Sam's yeah, working Rock through now because he's got a Charlie hydraulic Joe. failure on board Bravo, his 737 800. So, 33, you can climb straight up to what he's running through at the minute in his Bravo, kind Charlie of Joe deciphering of the emergency. Uh, Bravo, Charlie, Juliet, He's got a loss of system the A there. I assume then your pressure's dropped really low, Sam, right? Um, with that, 
he's looking up onto the overhead panel up here and he's got low pressure warning lights on. If he's got them on for both low pressure engine 1 and low pressure ELEC 2 system A then uh, that means he's got a loss of hydraulics on both systems for A. He's on page 13 2 he says. Right, stand by. We'll catch up with what he's doing. Bravo Charlie Juliet, the side heading uh, left 330. There you go. So. He has hydraulic pump low pressure. Hydraulic pump pressure is low. So hydraulic pump switch on the affected side needs to go off. Which means uh, depending on which light is illuminated up here. One, two, three or four. He's going to turn the, the relevant switch off for that. Then he's got a note here. Loss of engine driven hydraulic pump and high demand on the system may result in an intermittent illumination of the low pressure light for the remaining electric motor driven hydraulic pump. That could then in itself probably trigger a hydraulic pump overheat as well actually to be fair. Loss of system A. System A flight control sits confirmed to rudder which means uh, to standby rudder. Make sure I'm not going to miss a call for me here. Velocity 1749, contact Brisbane Centre 12084159. Good day. Anyway, he's going through it. So basically, he has to come up here. Uh, Sam's got this failure. So if he's following with a complete loss of system A, and he's got the lights there of flight control A, low pressure, uh, and both alpha hydraulic pumps for engine 1 and ELEC 2 are shown low pressure. He has to come up here, flick the guard, and go flight control system A into standby rudder mode. And then system A hydraulic pump switches here both go to off engine 1 and ELEC 2. And then he's got to follow through this checklist. And then he's got deferred items later on into descent, approach, manual gear extension as well has to then happen because the hydraulic failure will mean he's got to do a manual gravity extension of the gear. It's definitely, definitely at least a made uh, pan pan. If not, if it's a full hydraulic system failure, that'd be a mayday. Yeah, is that a Yankee Bravo Romeo Kilo? Legend, just uh, Dark Fury, just Google it. Stay firm. I can pride your heading if you'd like. Turn right, heading zero four zero. Seven three seven eight hundred QRH. And I'll spray one five six six three. Can resume profile speed. Profile speed. Off one five six seven. Can we get seven? Arcus is a Being an unpopular opinion. But having failures kind of ruin the experience of him. My cup of tea is to enjoy flight and actually get to where I'm going. Then again, I'm not in it to become a pilot. So most of this is going to be done like this today, the SAM, it's going to be putting the aeroplane into a redundancy mode. So you won't necessarily get a failure in an aircraft, certainly with a civil aircraft, where the hydraulic failure then leads to, that's it, it's an emergency landing, crash landing. There's, there's not necessarily that. Each aircraft will have a number of redundancy systems built into it, for the pilots to go through different modes before it really becomes a bit of a mess. So. All he's going to do is go into the standby flight control hydraulic modes for system A in lieu of it losing hydraulic pressure. Uh, which I think is electric pumps only at that point for system A. Not sure entirely myself. MPS has just survived the landing. <laughs> Last station for the radio check, five by five. Golski, have a good one. Thank Hopefully you haven't got too much longer to wait, buddy. Bravo Charlie Juliet, prison sir. We've not Bravo got Charlie any Juliet. VORs Bravo Charlie Juliet, at Hamilton Island. The winds up here for Rockhampton. What do you have on departure? or anything else so we might as well just turn both of those off we don't need those they're irrelevant to us but for the RMP Yankee runway 14 approach we'll have an inbound course of 135 I'm going to set that in the course knob just as a visual reminder of what we're going to be doing and um, we still got a way to go to the top of the set. Bravo, Chile, Chile, uh, it'll be foggy there and uh, wind uh, 
Sam says he's diverting R B R K. Might be okay. I think, to be honest, you should be okay, Sam. You should be okay to make it still with it. It's not necessarily. So we get at Heathrow, we get full emergencies all the time with aircraft flying in with hydraulic failures, where they've gone into a redundancy like what you're you're dealing with at the moment. But they will still fly into Heathrow. Um, you've just got to remember then you're going to have um, you're going to have potentially no auto brakes, so you might need manual brakes, and uh, you might have to use the gravity gear extension for the for the for the gear instead. Uh, you might then find as well autopilot A fails, so you'll have to revert to autopilot B. Good work, MPS Gaming. One five six six three. For your arrival, winds are uh, nil zero, about zero one knots, give or take, and we've got fog broken at uh, one hundred feet. Would you prefer runway three three, or would you prefer runway one five? I would take runway three three off there. One five six. One five six six three. Not a worry. Would you like the RMP? Hey, fam. Osprey 156 X ray, when ready, track direct. Uh, That's Rock Sam. Hampton, Sierra, Juliet. No longer flying to Hamilton Island, he's off to Rocco. I didn't hear him declare a pan so, pan give though. RMP again, please. This is the RMP runway 33, when ready, direct Rock Hampton, Sierra, Juliet. Rock Hampton, Sierra, Juliet, Osprey 156 X ray. So he's diverting. Probably a wise decision, going for an airport with a longer runway, slightly longer runway. Um, but that's his hydraulic failure now, starting to really kick in. So I guess he's he's made that decision as the commander of his aeroplane, that he's not necessarily going to make it to Hamilton, and if he does, the runway might not be long enough to actually uh, help him stop in time. So he's now diverting to Rockhampton. Brisbane Centre, Grey, Jetstar 848, climb to 8 Rocky, right, look at that. Jetstar 848, Brisbane Centre, Grey, climb to level 360. Climb to level 360, Jetstar 848. That's, that's fair enough, Sam, to be fair. He's probably a sensible choice. Uh, Brisbane Centre, Osprey 2306, we might have to disconnect here. We are having a frequency changing issues with our SIM or the view pilot uh, client, so I'm sorry about that. We're going to disconnect here. Have a good one, Sato. Osprey 2306, uh, not a worry. Have a good night or day. See you later. Have a fantastic evening, Osprey 2306. Good up. Sam says, last time flying the boss's jet. <laughs> so we've lost we've lost Zato to a V pilot connection issue, and we've lost Sam who's now diverting to Rockhampton with a hydraulic failure on board his aircraft. So there's Sam now. He's now diverting. Got any screenshots? Ah, you should put a screenshot of your failure. It's flying the Osprey Executive Boeing business jet. He's now off there, look. He was flying, of course, to Hamilton Island, which, my God, is going to be so busy. There aren't enough stands. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, and, yeah, he, he's off to Rockhampton. Slightly longer runway. runway. He's going for 3-3. Three, three. Smart move, to be fair. Sensible. I've got some screenshots to put up. One more. Oh, yeah, screenshot of the crosswind. Uh, we can zoom in on... Hamilton Island. We've got a helicopter. Lovely. Oh, I think we need to. We can click on it. Scroll up and we can look at uh, statistics. The weather at the top. Hamilton Tower Line 187. And then arrivals. 26 arrivals. 
<laughs> That's so one. good. Oh, My goodness. And four departures. Crikey. There aren't enough stands. We've got four stands. One five six six A. Will you require a hold at Sierra Juliet? Sam, have you declared a pan pan? Derry Cook, good morning. Also, good luck to Sam. Let us know how the approach goes. Ah, uh, Night Shepherd, have a good one, buddy. You've uh, travelled across the world. Ashley says, it makes me wonder if we'd get any more people with failures. Yeah, me too, because we had the same one, didn't we? We caught it before it developed into anything more severe, but for us, we had the auto brake failure instead, so we had to land with manual braking only. That was our first sign of a hydraulic failure on the last stream. But we then landed, and we got the PMDG maintenance van out, and we got it all repaired, and the hydraulic system refilled. Um, and serviced, so all good. Touch wood. Hopefully, everyone else flying that day did the same Auto just in case. Ray, descend one zero thousand. Area QNH one zero one eight. One zero thousand one zero one eight. Alpha one five six over. This is Central Austin touching. I'm trying to make sure we can talk. Eighty miles to top of descent. To reset auto brake max, and we've already checked the legs page. Anyway, we've got all of our approach data in, set and correct, and with a missed approach as well. Descent winds are done and set. Local Q and H, we can pull that in. Why be HM, isn't it, Hamilton Island? Where Q and H still one zero one seven. Jolly good. And um, we've got the fix rings from way 1-4 put in place. Ashton, so you, sh you should be able to connect on B-Pilot. You click the shared cockpit button, observer mode. You're then completely invisible to us. So you can spawn anywhere else. Um, basically. Sam's put a screenshot in the crew room chat on Discord. Hold on, let me have a look on my phone. Oh, it's a complete loss of hydraulics uh, system A. Pressure zero. How are you finding the QRH then, Sam? Are you finding it pretty useful? I don't fly, if I'm flying the PMDG 737, I always always fly with a QRH. Just open in the background, you never know what you might get. In real life the pilots would have it in a little folder down there, so if they have a problem they pull it up straight away. In in a way, that's the way I'm doing it, using it just in the backdrop of my second screen. So if I do have a failure, one click brings up the QRH for me. Um, but yeah, he's, he's a full on redundancy. So I assume then you've gone up here to standby rudder, you've turned both System A hydraulics off and you're now flying standby rudder mode for system A, right? Uh, don't forget, you will need to do gravity gear extension and you would you won't have any auto brakes. So you're gonna have to make sure you land with manual brakes and by the looks of it CMDB for the autopilot mode. And that means Sam gets to I think the first person on the channel as well flying along gets to deploy where is it? It's a click spot here, isn't there? Oh, it's there. Deploy the manual gravity gear. Don't forget, you need a bit more time to allow, though, Sam, for that. And follow the steps in the QRH as you do it. It's so helpful to have one of those ready, flying along. Any kind of failure that you could face, it's got everything you need to do in there. Various ones online, though, but the one I use is from Thompson Airways. 
Anth, have a good one, buddy. So he's got lost of System A. System A, standby rudder on. He's now turned the hydraulics off. He's now working through the inoperative items whilst diverting to um, whilst diverting to Rockhampton. And he's worked through nose wheel steering to alternate nose wheel. He's flicked the alternate steering switch there to alt instead of norm and plan for manual gear extension. And then he's got this deferred items checklist, making sure the pressurization system. So some of the some of them are kind of standard for descent. Pressurization set, master warning recall checked, auto brake set, checking your V refs, your minimums, approach briefing, altimeters, nav aids, all the rest of it. And then it goes back to manual gear extension. So landing gear lever off, manual gear extensions pull. Gives you a little bit of information, a bit of context for the pilot in the stressful situation. Wait 15 seconds after the last manual gear extension handle is pulled, then land the uh, gear down. Can we get uh, a hold somewhere? I didn't realise how high we were compared to the overdrum. Let's spray 156 X-ray into right hold at Sierra Juliet. On Sam's doing very good though. He sounds five. calm. He's trying to he's trying to think ahead oh, of the plane. Uh, he's five managing five all this stuff six. with a complete loss of system A hydraulics. Good, and I'll spray 156 X ray when uh, you're able to connect to Brisbane Centre 120 small 15. Good day. Uh, Look, Sam. Cheers, left. Stop. Take care, guys. Sounds like he's doing a good job. Uh, right, Meta YBHM in the live chat. We need to set our minimums, which were 550, so I'll set that now in Barrow. 550. 550. QNH 1017, we can set that as well. 1234567. Down here, in it ref. Expected what well, estimated landing weight 59.8. Set that. And VAS airplane toolbox has said we can land with flap 30. And all station center is uh, we're heading off. There is a control to change, we'll be on this frequency, so no requirements. So good night. I'm already here, so don't worry. <laughs> Have a good night, thanks for the ATC. Bye bye. Yep. Bye. <laughs> uh, Osprey 495, give me a call now, 120 decimal 15. 120 15, Osprey 495. Hey, massive turnout from Backpack today. Huge thanks to you to all our Australian controllers. What a turnout for these guys. It's so late for them as well, don't forget. Those of us in the UK, at the minute it's 2 o'clock UK time. It's like midnight in Australia on a Sunday evening. Osprey 495, thanks. Uh, Descend flight level 150 when you're ready. Uh, from present position, track director of run for the RNP Yankee runway 14. As the first instructions for Hamilton Island, uh, we want to head us. Uh, around 40 miles from the uh, top of the descent of 395. Yep, but did you copy the approach expectations just then that I gave you? <laughs> uh, stand by. So it's the RNP Yankee, Yankee. Uh, for runway 14 via Ovron. Once you punch that into your uh, FMC, it'll give you a slightly different descent rate. Yep, uh, RNP Yankee runway 14 via the uh, Ovron uh, transition of Spray 495. Spray 495, thanks. So VRF set, Barrow set, local pressure set, uh, auto brake max, pressure panel next. Velocity 1749 descent to 14 5, feet for the airport. The tower on We're going to zip this down to zero. Set. Uh, we're there. Everything else is checked and briefed. Mr. Proach is briefed. It's track 135 degrees to HM 685 times 2800 res directed by ATC. Nice and easy. No stress. Ian's on being vectored. He's in the, he's in the seven three seven nine hundred. My goodness.
quick check of where Sam is. There he is with his hydraulic failure. He's uh, circling now to lose height. Short final approach there. Look, controller's uh, been helping him out massively actually to kind of uh, get him down and towards Rockhampton. He's gone direct to Rocco. We've got loads of aircraft descending upon Hamilton Island. Look at that. There's only a few stands. I think everyone else descended, uh, departed ahead of me. Graham. Osprey 645 as well. And then I've got Zagoku in front of us. Osprey 495. So everyone's going to be ahead of us. That is looking busy. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, and Osprey 156 Heavy is uh, 3,000. Osprey 156 x thanks. Uh, from your present position, you cleared the RMP runway 33. And uh, runway 33, you cleared to land. Clear up here for everyone with 33, quick to land. 33 up to 156 thanks so much. Let me see if I can load up all bets. 156 x no worries at all. The trucks and all that are rolling for you, so they should meet you on the runway. Copy, thank you. Uh, not long to stop at descent now, we'll be requesting that shortly. I'm just trying to see if I can get... Uh, let me see, maybe I can change uh, that. Velocity 709. Um, sorry, uh, the centre controller didn't tell me that you were still on the frequency, so that's my apologies. You can hear you descent to 5,000, I'll grab some details for you in a sec. Right, okay, here you go. Uh, off, 5, 7, 4, 6, 7, 4, 9. So the Melbourne control panel. Hopefully you can see that, folks. Uh, lots of options, loads of scenery options. Enable static apron, ground surface equipment, airside street signs. Uh, enable air uh, apron spotlight masks. The one zero one enable yellow concrete barriers throughout the airport. Degree, ground eight traffic eight animated. Landside simple car parks with generic seven cars. Seven nine, nine, enable nine, landslide nine, cutter nine, containers. Nine. Static ground surface equipment. Vehicles within airport perimeters but not on aprons. Enable landslide parked cars Osprey close to the terminals. Alpha, give me a call now on 120.15. Walk over 121.5, Prosperity 165 Alpha. Uh, enable landslide parked cars, well over 10,000. So considerable impact on performance should be deactivated for many systems. I left that off. I was very tempted to put it on today, but it would have filled those car parks up that we saw on the ground earlier on. Stand by, let me just call the controller. Brisbane Center, hello again, Osprey 165 Alpha inbound knit it, flight level 370. Enable Osprey generic Victoria license plates. Alpha, thanks. Uh, you're cleared the I'll RMP toggle it down so you can read it. Yankee runway 14 uh, via Ovron. And from your present position, descend flight level 150 when you're ready. Expect to RMP Yankee. Runway 14 via Ovron and when ready descend flight level 150 Osprey 165 Alpha. Osprey 165 Alpha, thanks. That was probably the worst way I could have said it, so I'm very glad that you understood. <laughs> so I know what you meant. The, uh, I didn't even notice it, it was any different to be honest, I'll just go with it. Enable uh, generic Victoria license plates, we need people inside terminals, it says they're heavy on performance, should be deactivated on most systems. Enable white noise limiter gables, we saw those actually as well on uh, just before departure. Tall pillars showing stand numbers throughout the aprons, they were all over the airfield as well. Landside street signs, uh, static aircraft around the jet base, custom taxi signs throughout the airport, VDGS docking system which uses Null, null aero, um, enable trees and bushes, generic trees and bushes, wigwags that hold shorts, and windsocks throughout the airport. So, all of those custom options here for you to tweak your Melbourne International Airport scenery via that control panel based on your own system performance and what you're finding when it uh, when you get it installed. If you get it installed, if you want it installed, top of descent rocking up. So, we're going to set 15. Early. You can descend to 3,000. You cleared the ILS approach from A01, right? Yeah, lots of options, Millsy. Yeah, lots of rack and pack and stack them. Thanks very much for your help, Osprey 156. 
156 x ray, no worries. Hope you got down safely and didn't break too many things. Uh, goodbye. Wigwag in compass is the, you know, this, uh, the whole point of the runway, you've got the two amber lights that flash next to each other. It's those, they're called, they're runway, runway hold lights. Um, I can't remember exactly what they're called. Runway guard lights, that's what they're called, RGLs, but they're, yeah, they're called wigwags as well, as like a slang term if you like. Top of descent. Being a path active. Good job, Sam. So when you get chance, Sam, just go into the failure options and service the aircraft, refill the hydraulics, and clear the failure. Uh, nice work. And I bet now you'll fly every time with the QRH, just in case. And Osprey 645, give me a call now on 120.15. is next. 120.15, Osprey 645. So that's pre tuned ready. That's going to be Hamilton Tower. Still got an 84 knot crosswind for us. My goodness. And Hamilton Atis, thanks to Cooper for staying on. He's been online for three, four hours now. It's Information Hotel. Okay, 645, thanks. Uh, you can expect the RNP Yankee approach from my 14 via Ovron. You can do so in flight level 170. 130 RNP Yankee from my 14 via Ovron. Thanks for flying along with everybody as well. I hope you enjoyed it. There's Sam down there in Rockhampton, somewhere further down there. Uh, Osprey 1964, thanks, descent uh, to 6000, connect 1017. 6000, 1017, Osprey 164. Hmm. Why has my computer now decided I can't take right screenshots anymore? Velocity 709, thanks, runway 0 run right, clear to land. 01 right to land, velocity 709. Jeez. I'll stop clicking stuff randomly. There we go. Yamera, hello to you. Flying uh, Detroit to Orlando, uh, to um, to Chicago O'Hare. Anthony, welcome. Osprey 2472, thanks. You can turn left track direct to Osron. Turn left. Yeah, thank you to everybody who's hit the like Osprey button so far. 136 likes. Fantastic. Mills, he's saying, do you use any AI traffic? If so, which one? So I only fly on VATSIM, so the traffic that I use is relevant to VATSIM uh, only. So model matching stuff. I use FSLTL primarily with AIG as a backup, so I've still got them both installed. It's a huge amount of storage. And uh, and, and file size for both of those though, it's about 50, 60 gigabytes for those two packs. Um, but it kind of mops everything up. But that's it really, I don't really use any traffic injectors or anything like that. Because I routinely fly on BATSIM and that then yeah, it model matches the pilots around me on the network. If you are not just tuning in, we are now into descent towards wonderful Hamilton Island. AU Scenes Hamilton Island is one of the nicest sceneries that I've seen um, in the sim. Certainly is a very unique place, remarkable place to fly uh, in Australia. If you like a little bit of a challenge and you like Skiathos as well, for example in Greece, this is the Australian version of Skiathos. It's really good, very tricky short runway no holds and only RMP approaches
That's when they earn their money, Sam. We always we get the full emergencies at Heathrow with a hydraulic failure or loss of hydraulics reported. And people think, oh, because there's one a week usually. You think, my goodness, here we go again. But in my head, because we because we because we fly sim and I fly the 737-800 with the QRH, and you might come across failures. Those of us who are kind of have got a bit of an appreciation for how much work pilots can do when it goes wrong, like everybody in flight sim that love the realism, um, I kind of sit back and think, my goodness, this, this could get messy, depending on what type of hydraulic failure he's got. And in my flight sim brain, I'm racking through the things that might be happening inside the flight deck to understand what to expect when that aircraft lands. So it's really, really good. Um, but yeah. More common than people realise. So it's good to see it. it's a common failure in the 737 for people. I had one last screen. Sam had one today. Oh uh, yeah, we've got service base failures on, so... Who we got over there? 20, 20 odd miles. There he is, somebody racing us into Hamlet Island. Bravo Charlie Juliet, request a fence. Bravo Charlie Juliet, thanks. Lovely textures below, look at that. I'm just going to keep you out of the queue for a little bit until after the, all these aircraft have gone into Hamilton. I'll put you behind them. Bravo Charlie Juliet, uh, follow 130. Bravo, Charlie Juliet, thanks. Uh, into the hold of Mackay on descent flight level 130, right hand traffic, three minute length. Okay, hold on Mackay, uh, right hand and uh, three minute legs. Uh, oh dear, Justin. Uh, there's three off your left, so it'll be probably about 10 minutes in the hold. Osprey 495, uh, from your present position, turn right, heading 080. 080, we're heading Osprey 495. FSL right, TL. Alpha, turn right, heading 080. Right, 080, Osprey 165 Alpha. So, because we're at higher altitudes and we're flying a bit quicker, I'm making Osprey sure we turn with right a limited bank. 215. Right, 090 degrees, Osprey 645. Osprey 2472, descend to 5000, the QNH is 1017. QNH 1017, descend 5000, Osprey 2472. Yeah, Sam, great skills, really good. It does test you, doesn't it? It tests your metal. When it goes wrong, you're thinking, my God, all of a sudden, <laughs> your head's filled with panic. Good morning, Brisbane, the center velocity, 805. I think we're kind of being uh, vectored around a little bit. Uh, kids, eh? Still not visible yet. Good Hamilton day. Island is off up there somewhere. In fact, that that's it there, I believe. So it's just coming into view. We've got right turn 080 though. And because of that, VNAV's not really going to do very much for us either. So we're going to go to vertical speed mode. We'll just maintain 1500 foot per minute for now. Vision, sorry, Osprey 495, continue descent to 8,000 km one zero. Yeah, if you're just using seven. model matching like FSLTL this just for bats and you don't need the injector, you just need the model package like Chris Packett said. There's that aeroplane ahead of us. He's been squeezed in in front of us all. There's his contrails. We're about to go behind him. He goes. We'll pop that on now as well. 
In cover saying it looked like you were scrolling your mouse wheel to change the heading. You can hold the mouse button. If you're not doing that, then please disregard. Yeah, you, so you can click, oops, and then hold it. But I like to scroll the mouse wheel because it's like, in my head, it's like, psychologically, I'm twiddling the knob on the heading bug, if that makes sense. But it's a good point you make, though. You can just, uh, sort of that left arrow where the cursor is positioned now. You can just press it and hold it, and it will spin the wheel for you and change the heading. Underneath the contrails, look at that. Two seventy five knots still, and on the side of the aeroplane, epic views. Can't change, I can't do screenshots for some reason anymore. Dave, my goodness. Osprey, 495, thanks. Turn left, track direct to Ovron. And left, track direct to Ovron, Osprey, 495. Might have to hide them on that sim then. That's so cool. Osprey 569, Charlie, give me a call 120 decimal 15. 120 decimal 15, Charlie. No, Chris, sadly not. Boarding to boarding time, I don't know. Vision 165 Alpha, <laughs> thanks. Turn left heading 290. Uh, left 290 is at Frostbury 165 Alpha. That's correct. Brisbane Centre, Osprey 569, Charlie. Osprey 569, Charlie, thanks uh, from your present position. Just turn right heading 050 for me. Roger, 050, can you give me that frequency again? I um, think I miss, might have misunderstood you. Uh, 120.15. That'll teach me, and I went 121.15, so it's 120.15, I'll we'll call you in a second. But turning right, heading uh, 050. 121.15, Charlie, thanks. Uh, Osprey 569, Charlie, thanks. Uh, Osprey 569, apparently. Ah well, we'll find a parking space one way or another. It suggests he's apparently flying outbound somewhere else. So please land. He's taking off imminently before we actually get in there. We've still got we've still got 80 miles to go, or 72 miles to go. Probably about 85, 90 track miles. Haha, <laughs> Doc. I've turned it on because we can see him better. Bravo, Charlie, Juliet, and I wanted to see where he'd gone. It'll be the RNP Yankee approach from but way, it's uh, subjective. One, the sunscreens are there yeah, to use uh, as and when you feel Juliet, like you need to use them. There's no the, uh, prescriptive. You must. You must remove the sunscreens for descent. Because otherwise, you would not be able to spot the person you're trying to spot if you're looking for it in the sim. It's very useful because you can then spot that one guy Brother, who's Juliet. inside Thanks. that. The hold, it'll be, uh, He's there the somewhere. You see the back of his contrail, but that's about it. But we can see him Brother, using Charlie the sunscreens. Encompass is wonderful, isn't it? Not long uh, to go. From direct, Alpha. Time, Joel, thank you. Vision 645, turn right hitting 3, sorry, I say again, turn left hitting 300. 
It's all spray. Osprey 2472, give Tower a call now, 118.7. 118.7. Uh, Doc saying, just saying that real Boeing pilot said that in his live stream, but that might be company traffic. That might be a company instruction, so that one airline out of all of the 737 operators might have said that. Osprey 165 Alpha, turn left heading 270 for me. Left 270 degrees, Osprey 165 Alpha. Uh, people get kind of pent up on, you know, Real pilot says this, real pilot says that, but if you might find 10 pilots will have slightly different advice because they're trained with a different airline. What's best is you just do what you feel is right. It's things like wind, wind uh, sunscreens and things, look. We can barely see that. We've now got added contrast. That's great. So if we had the same like we had a moment ago, we saw it clear as day. With that traffic, we were able to see his contrails through that and then roughly the nav lights. More so because of the way the sim works. But it's a useful way of trying to identify where that traffic might have gone that we've been vectored around in the sun. Uh, and it worked quite well for us. Osprey 165 Alpha, thanks. Turn right track direct to Ovron. You can do send uh, flight level 140. Uh, track direct to Ovron, descend flight level 140, Osprey 165 Alpha. Hell now. So we've refreshed the direct to there to go back to Ovron at 4000 and we'll descend flight level, uh, flight level 140. What I'll do is I'll just use vertical speed now. And we'll keep the heading bug turning round. Keep us in sync. Vision 645, uh, actually disregard. And Bravo Charlie Juliet, thanks for your assistance. From your present position, you can exit the hold. Turn right track direct to November Alpha. Okay, cancel hold right now, they're rough, but I'll do it. Actually, that, that's Mackie, isn't it? Mackay? That's Mackay. So that's the aircraft there that's been in the hold. He's in the hold down there somewhere to avoid all of the IFR traffic descending over and above and around him at the minute, flying into Hamilton Island. So there's an aeroplane, little aeroplane down there somewhere. But he's not on our TCAS. I think it's time to just wind that clock forward a tad. Get that sun down. And chase the sunset for our arrival. Gotta work out what that was. Don't know what it is. Flight level 140. Osprey 165 Alpha D send to 6000 QNH 1017. Send 6000 QNH 1017 Osprey 165 Alpha. Osprey 450. 495, descend 5000, contact tower 118 decimal 7, good day. 240, vertical speed mode. Descend 5000 and then uh, 118 decimal 7, let's prepare now, Fev. Get the nose down. See how we go. Yeah, welcome to the Wit Sundays, folks. There they are, right on the nose. 
Hamilton Island is up through there in that little there's a little that big island there. Hamilton Island's right at the base of that effectively, but look at that for a view flying in. Cuberoni, have a look at my VATSIM tutorial playlist episodes. There's a whole playlist set to help you get started on VATSIM. You can dive into it, download free PDFs uh, to kind of help, and don't be afraid of making mistakes. That's about right for 6,000. Almost at 250 knots as we arrive at uh, 10,000 shortly. Probably about 15 minutes to landing now, folks. That sun is starting to really become a blaze. Crikey Sam, yeah, good choice. Doc says, can't believe it's been a week since that massive thunderstorm that burnt your barbecue. It almost, it almost electrocuted me. <laughs> yeah, that was fun though. It was, it was, ent it was entertaining. Standing outside with lightning crashing King around, King literally King like four yeah. houses down, whilst flipping burgers to try and try and get them on a plate and get them in the house before I died. <laughs> At that point, it felt dangerous, so I stayed inside and burned some sausages. Just left some of the sausages out there until the storm had moved away a little bit. Yeah, it's funny. Risky as heck. Yeah, I make mistakes uh, most flights. We all do. The great thing is you kind of try and identify those to then prevent it next time. Green Island Reef, Andy, thanks. So, 240 knots, look at that, rate of descent uh, has allowed us to kind of just decelerate below that 250 by 10,000 feet. Justin, nice, is he departing then? Is he actually about to depart, Justin, that, that 747? Osprey 165 Alpha, descent of 5,000. 5,000 Osprey 165 Alpha. And Osprey 165 Alpha, contact the Tower now, 118 decimal 7, have a good one, bye bye. Tower 1187, Osprey 165 Alpha, thanks uh, to the ATC, really appreciate it, have a good night, bye. Anytime, see ya. Hey. Osprey 772, climb at 2800, I'll follow the approach. On 2800 and continue at missed approach. I'll spread through. Ian's on a go around. Whoa! <laughs> it's all about to get messy, I think. How to tower? Good evening, Osprey 165 Alpha with information hotel 737800, 9500 feet for 5000 direct Obron. Expecting RMP Yankee 14. Osprey 4, I can't see your call sign. Um, uh, cleared. Uh, okay, cleared the uh, RMP Yankee approach, uh, runway 14. Uh, uh, report established. Cleared RMP Yankee, runway 14, will report established. Osprey 165 Alpha. 2999, again. 2999. Um. <laughs> Runway 14, clear for takeoff. He's actually um, going. Uh, report airborne. Oop, lights. Alright, runway 14, clear for takeoff and uh, runway heading for us, Connie 9999. Uh, so we're going to get a Clitter 747 go, un I think, underneath us actually. Or it might be over us. Runway heading. Oh, please, please confirm we are clear for the approach, so please. It's going to get interesting. Oh, I'm going to get rid of the music now. 72. Uh, Turn left. Turn left heading 030. That's 030, spread 2472. And sorry, last station calling Hamilton, uh, say again. 
Osprey 495, are we clear for the approach? There's the shiny lights there. That's the Calitta 747. There's Ian, flying runway heading on the missed approach. As well. Clear for the approach, we're called to establish Osprey 495. He's airborne, taking off like an absolute rocket. Crikey. Right, let's do, so lights, signs, pressure panels looking good, Pre uh, depressurizing normally. And we're going to do one final cabin chime for the crew, seats for landing. 20, 99, 99, 2005, and climb 5, 2000, Clean 99, direct, uh, first waypoint, not off wrong, the one after that. Yeah, uh, so did I, Doc. <laughs> for, uh, Connie, no, I'm a little no, confused. And Osprey 2472, turn left, heading 30. So we continue down to 4000 now, that's what we're expecting for the RP Yankee approach. And uh, I'm going to go to VNAV speed. Connie, no, man, uh, Spoilers. Climb. Oh. Step away. Oh, there he is! Jeez, the aeroplane length is about one fifth of the entire runway. The size of that thing. Uh, Osprey twenty-four. Let's keep the vertical speed going. Heading. Setting left to heading three zero zero. Osprey twenty-four seventy-two. Osprey 165 Alpha, you with me? Alpha. Osprey 165 Alpha. Um, descend to 5000, expect hold on that one. Uh, just gone through 5000, I'll go back and I'll expect hold on one. No, uh, Osprey 165 Alpha, descend one, uh, 4000, expect to hold. There we'll go, um, have you got directions for the hold at Avron? It should be published on the RP Yankee standby. Uh, negative, I've got nothing on the charts. Ah, quick. <laughs> uh, Connie 9999, contact uh, Brisbane Centre uh, 12015. That'll do. Because we're about to one run out of time before we enter the hold, so we're in the hold. <laughs> uh, Osprey 165 Alpha, just make the uh, right hand turn. I don't have details at this time. Yeah, we'll go, we'll make a right hand turn, uh, one minute uh, legs, Osprey 165 Alpha, 4000 feet. And there it is. We can't even see it. It's right below us. Osprey 2472, track. There's the airport. Trying to load in. Osprey 2472. My god. So we'll do 210. Put the collar back on for max rate turns. Holding it off, Ron. Osprey 2472, climb 5000 in direct off, Ron. 4,000, sir. Osprey 2472. There's some ships. Osprey 495 established uh, 14. Osprey 495 and 14 quitland. 14 quitland, Osprey 2472, immediately stop climb, maintain 3000 for now. Maintain 3000, Osprey 2472. And Osprey 2472, confirm your direct of run. Affirm direct Dog, well, Hamilton's quite unique. I think it, they, they don't really have a choice either when we're flying in. Osprey 2472, you don't appear direct of run. Uh, confirm the waypoint you're direct to. Ron, O, Oscar, Victor, Romeo, off, Oscar, November. Apparently Ian's here somewhere. Osprey. There, oh, there he is. 
Seven two Roger. Um, at Ogron, enter. Uh, right hand hole. Who's coming up behind? Whoa! Look right at that. Holes at Ogron. Twenty four seventy three. <laughs> I might go to 220 knots. Where's Ian? There's Hamilton Island Airport. Oh, look at that sun. I've oh, got those where Ian's going. <laughs> Suppose he's going back to Over in the opposite direction, isn't he? Osprey 249, uh, report level passing. Sorry, Osprey. Uh, Four ninety five report level passing. Right. We can do it in two K sixty hopefully. If you got the internet for it. Round we go. Good the uh, the light bouncing off those metallic gold details on that special livery there. Looking fantastic. <laughs> Living on the player, I know, right? It's stunning. Look at that. Especially Hamilton Island is just remarkable. This is another payware scenery. Absolutely worth buying because it's just stunning. Bravo, Charlie, Juliet, Hamilton Dow, good day. You can descend to 4,000. 4,000, Bravo, Charlie, Juliet. You got no chance at all for the holds, interestingly enough. Even on the other approaches, no holds at all at Ogron. Osprey 165 Alpha. From Ogron, you cleared the RNP Yankee, runway 14, report established. Uh, from Ogron, cleared RNP Yankee, runway 14, uh, clear, report established, Osprey 165 Alpha. So, that's our hold at Ovron at the moment. We can now go back into the hold page. We're going to exit the holds. Execute. Exit arms. So now we're going to reach Ovron and then continue out on this uh, radius here. So, I'm now going to set 3,500 feet ready for final approach. Let's do it. Yeah, Hamilton Island is quite unique. It, does, it kind of does its own thing. Let's bring that range ring in. We've got uh, Ian's over here somewhere. There he is. Uh, backtrack, runway 14. Taxi, bravo to the bay. Good Backtrack, runway 14. Here we go. Bravo. Right turn. 3,500. Max 180 knots. Let's bring that speed down. Flat 5. We'll go for 170. Mission mode continuous. Final time for the crew, just in case. Lights and signs, pressure panels all good. And final approach, no warnings. Set missed approach briefed as well. Speed 180 by HM843, so we're going to achieve that. And uh, yeah, look how spectacular that is, guys. So good. Mikael, welcome, buddy. Look at the colours as well. Beautiful blues down there. The little ships and boats that you see on approach are part of the AU scene scenery as well. Look at that. Thousand five hundred lap ten.
How was it, Mikhail? That's pretty four nine five. Break it in, Bravo. Osprey 495, taxi to the French today, break Osprey 165 Alpha, uh, Romeo 14, clear land. Romeo 14, clear land, Osprey 165 Alpha. Keep it coming. Preempt the next bit. Eleven miles. Where are we? There she is. Put one three five on. Get down. Lap 15. And Bravo Charlie, do it. We clear the approach. Oh, oh, sorry about that, Bravo Charlie. Yeah, I forgot about you. Um, negative. If you could just enter a right hand hold at. Uh, it's going to be 147. Uh, 147. November, India. Uh, one minute later, it's okay. Go flap 30. Only final. Yeah, brother, tell us it's okay. You want to just make a uh, the left hand over here, okay? No worries. Okay, here we go. So, my throttles, my controls. Control visualizer for you guys. Osprey 645 entering the hole at off from uh, descending to 5000 feet. Osprey 645. Auto thrust warning off. You can descend 4000. They expect the RMP Yankee. 2800 is what we want to set. Osprey RMP Yankee. Osprey 645. 2000, that's set 147. It is such a nice approach this. Toby Eye Tracker makes it look really good as well. We'll sort out a little bit of pitch and speed. Pitch and power. To capture that rate of descent. Osprey 645, uh, quiet descend 5000. Recycle the flight directors for this particular approach, and uh, we're flying it visually now. Ten to five thousand, and uh, no, also six Pitch for speed. And Osprey twenty four seventy two, you can climb four thousand. Climb four thousand, Osprey twenty four seventy two. Approaching minimums. Get down three green flaps uh, thirty and green order break max and set. Three minimums, we're nice and stable, we'll continue. Uh, Bravo Charlie Juliet, uh, we're right to come in there. Bravo Charlie Juliet, uh, can't really have two people on the approach at once, it's just like the procedural rules, but um, can you downgrade to a VFR or VFR flight conditions and then I can put you on a visual approach? Yeah, Bravo Charlie Juliet, do we have that? Here we go. Short runway, no worries. Um, slight change of aim, landing early, look into the end. 50, and flare, hold that picture. Thanks, you can 
Uh, you well, down. So you cleared the visual approach very well. Reverse screen, nose was down, forwards on the stick. Valid challenge, I cleared visual approach from AAL. 1 4. 18 knots. Let's kill the reverse thrust. And uh, Osprey 2472 ah, and Osprey reverse, uh, the auto brakes. 45, I do apologise for the 284, way, but, not bad, eh? Just getting this one more right uh, there. arrival and then we'll be able Top to left. go to the hole. Almost Back accidentally one. came to a stop there. Oh, good, Osprey 24. I didn't want to stamp on the brakes, that's the only thing. Yeah, remarkably nice scenery this. We'll have a look at New Sky, see what... Osprey 165 Alpha, you can backtrack one for Fake 8 at Alpha to the Fake 8. Backtrack one for Fake 8 Alpha to the gates, Osprey 165 Alpha, thanks to the ATC. And using the whip in the turn. Come on, girl. Use a little bit of... Uh, Engine one. I hope you guys have really enjoyed the route as well. Uh, lots of options out of Melbourne, of course. Loads. Perth, Hobart, Brisbane, Sydney, Cairns, Darwin. Uh, Auckland International, yeah, loads and loads of different routes available from Melbourne but I wanted to kind of do something with an absolute banger at the end and that's uh, Hamilton Island, Hamilton Island really good challenge and then you get wonderful scenery like this good day um, direct Auburn, uh, expect to hold it Auburn, uh, right this. end one minute later yeah, that will be absolutely great. Uh, with that and A couple of bits over there as well in the scenery. And if you haven't seen Hamilton Island, it's so good. What have we got? Let's go six. More groove runway textures for us. Golf ball there, look. Little golf course. Daniel, this is AU Scenes, Hamilton Island. We're going to vacate at Alpha. What stands are free? Do we know? Hmm. Oh, you know what I need? Uh, APU. So what stands are free? Okay, <laughs> uh, in an alpha. Charlie Juliet, Troy 1 4 Quidlam. 1 4 Quidlam, brother Charlie Juliet. And Osprey 165, you can taxi at the stretch of the bay, good day. Hello, taxi to the bay, sir. Thank you very much for the ATC, yeah, Osprey 165 Alpha, good day. Okay. Hmm. 5 is free, Lazarus says. Thank you, buddy. So, GSX. Osprey 2472. From Ogron, you have cleared the RNP Yankee from a 1 4. Report established. Don't need to follow me. From Ogron, cleared for the RNP Yankee and report established for Osprey 2472. So, lights, taxi, just drove steady to steady, APU gen on. They're good, that's set. Making the turn nice and tight. Down here. Transponder. Traffic mode off. We've got an aircraft about to touch down.
Oh, he's on the short final. Jeez, so I think we're gonna three, four. Crikey. Have to go real wide here. That's pretty fancy, Fantali, thanks. Yeah, bloody trucks, get out of the way. Stamp 5 coming up. Yeah, I was told AK Alpha, though, musical aviator. Here we go. There's our marshaller. And on the brakes. Now. Bar brake set. APU's good. APU gen is on. Bleed. Isolation valve open. One and two off. And we'll pop the chocks on. So menu. FS actions, ground services, wheel chalk sets, anti collision lights I'm off, to, um, hotel and then we're going to go new there. sky to have a look at our again. score, and we'll close the flight. 9.9, nah, that's because we were delayed uh, two minutes. No problem. You can descend to 3, little little descend profit, 6466. Six, six. Uh, I'll take it. Uh, There's our little. Um, um, Bit of vectoring there around FM, Mackay. 3,500 and then cleared for the RNAV Yankee for okay. Osprey 2472. Nice route, slightly delayed, but that's because we got super excited at Melbourne. It's worth the little penalty, isn't it, at the end of the day? Good job. Not bad at all, eh? And then we can zip out of there. We'll turn the camera up in speed. Uh, we can go to GSX. Request deboarding. So let's see what it gives us. Osprey 569 Charlie, uh, I can only have one person on the approach at one time, but what. Uh, uh, Jet Center? I'll have Osprey I thought we had a. Oh, there we go. We, so we thought we had one on final. It's a King Air. Um, Enjoy Metallica, I MPS. So he can backtrack super quick anyway. Oh, there's a rogue truck! <laughs> Jeez. So, our passengers, we'll follow them off. Uh, the heck are they doing? Everyone's had a drink here. It's a party island, but good grief. I don't know why it's not letting me take screenshots. Darren in Hertfordshire, welcome. How do you stop the flow menu from having to select it twice? Do you mean the GSX? How do you mean? Uh, Bravo Charlie, you're at uh, backtracking now. We'll make some that uh, Delta, that's okay. Bravo Charlie, you're at everyone. Uh, taxi Delta, bag it up. I'm Charlie, you're at Delta, bag it Locks a Vic bitter. It appears so. Uh, Osprey 642, you can descend 4000. We'll watch these punters. Is it 645 or 642? Apparently, there's an Nvidia GeForce game ready driver available for update, by the way, folks. Descend to 4000, also 645. Got 4X. I remember when they sold that in the UK for a little while. There's the control tower. Report, uh, There's our controller. Doing a, doing a top job. Osprey 
Yeah, this is the GSX profile for Hamilton Island from, uh, from AUC. I think Impulse Simulations actually created the GSX profile for it. So they should all follow. Look at that. A proper lineup of Osprey. I can't take a screenshot for some reason. I don't know why. Brenda says, look up. Oh, yeah. Just behind the cliff over there. There he is. He's in the hold. Alvron. As is probably everyone else collapsing in on the airport. We've got one coming in on final. Look at that. So we can skip past these. They're going to follow the line all the way down here. Into... Osprey 645, 4000 feet. A genuinely stunning, Osprey one of the nicest five, six, nine, Charlie, the sceneries. Let me pop in here. Six, nine, They're going to poke their head into this remarkably nice place. How good is this? There's the baggage centre. So good. Here they come. Uh, well, I think we're going to have about 180 people. Justin, I don't know. That would be great, wouldn't it? If we can debort, like disembark all at the same time. That would look quite spectacular, wouldn't it? I was saying, yeah, GSX, uh, you have to use tab key twice for it to show the GSX display. Check your keybinds, make sure you don't have another thing that's triggering tab. Because I just press tab once and it brings it up. Click it once, brings up GSX. But, uh, well, that's actually, that's a good question, actually. I just, I just realised. Perhaps you haven't got the GSX widget from flightsim.to. If you haven't, Information. India is have now. a look at, um, yeah that's it, have a look at the uh, widget by Tim Wells, that's the one I was trying to think of the name. Significant weather. Look at that for a backdrop guys. How good is that? Millsy, yeah, it seems so. It does, yeah, it seems it does. We had a we had a GSX profile custom to Melbourne, and I didn't realise we had. Oh, who's this flying in? Do we know? Here we go. Easy fella. Oh, look at that fiery sky. Is this Ian? Nice. Good work. Let's three, two, four, seven, two, backtrack one. Yeah, four. in. Nice uh, job. In taxi alpha to the bay today. Taxi it seems as though uh, Yankee Mike Mike Lima, Melbourne Tullamarine by Orbex, does come with a GSX profile because that's what we had when we arrived. Um, well, when we were departing, we had that very custom pushback, didn't we? Got all the punters going in. Look, there we go, into the arrivals hall. Look at that. How good is that? Justin, I, yeah, I've th I thought GSX for quite a while has been worth the purchase, but it requires um, a, it requires custom profiles, like with most things, to make it look great and make it be great. But yeah, as Andy's saying as well, Parallel 4.2 Flow 
three different versions. I've spoke about it in detail in my GS uh, in my Parallel 4.2 video that went live uh, about a week ago now. I think it was. So do check that out. It goes into a lot of detail about what this wheel is and how to add widgets and also the three versions that you get. So Parallel 4.2 Flow comes in a free version, an essential version, and a pro version. If you don't have a pro version, you can't add the widgets. You have to have Flow Pro to be able to use the widgets, basically. So hope, hopefully that helps um, explain how some of it all works. It's quite unique in what it offers. Right, where are they going? Yeah, Power 4 to Flow Pro is really good. There's that ruddy truck again. Living the dream saying, bring back memories, been to Hamilton Island twice. Lucky bugger. There's our jet. Last couple of uh, cases coming off. And uh, we're almost completely disembarked. The last passengers trailing past the Ospreys. The gaggle of Osprey. There she is, ready for holidays. Oh, Holly Bobs in Hamilton. All heading into the terminal. Oh, look at that. If I just go to this view here, where is it? There you go, look at that. There's Ian taxiing in with people. Ollie says, can you try Orbex Arlanda Stockholm? Uh, yeah, I will do it at some point in the future. I'll have to purchase it. Uh, they haven't sent it to me for a preview or anything, so I don't know when my next stream will be, basically, because... Uh, Effectively, it's it's uh, it's all up in the air at the minute because I've got a dog requiring some significant surgery very very soon and uh, and all that sort of stuff. Justin says, "Can the service pilots please have that Commonwealth team livery?" Roger at three thousand right now. Roger six twenty-five. Uh, the answer there is probably not. Charlie, you can descend. Um. It's not been a popular download from, from the ones that we've had created and they yeah, they all demo designs um, has a long list of liveries to do. We're gearing up for the triple seven release and the Aerosoft A330s. So we're we're kind of holding back ready for those so we can start to pump liveries out for them for the Osprey fleet as well. Uh, Incubus, yeah, they are, yeah. Not always. Um, Orbex tend to just add it to the account basically, um, which is really generous of them. It means that I can enjoy them as well and use them more and show you guys more. Melbourne particularly good. We need to fly into Melbourne as well of course so maybe one of the next streams in the near future post release we will all be able to fly into Melbourne together. Perhaps it's Sydney to Melbourne. Do you want to do yeah let's let them go and enjoy Mountain Island as well for a little while. How many more have we got on approach? Do we know? Osprey 645, runway 14, you're clear to land. Runway 14, clear to land, Osprey 645. Osprey 569, Charlie, just confirming you're descending 4000. Ah, uh, last two. Descending 4000, Osprey 569, Charlie. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate it. Nervous okay, times ahead for him, bless him. No worries, no worries. It's just uh, we only need you down to the uh, intercept point for a bomb. It's okay, I'm dumping up. Just... Right, so this is Brandon then. <laughs> Shoot, guessing from the live chat. Good morning, Ed. Welcome. Ah, Hendrik, no worries, buddy. You can. I mean, this is an early one today. To be fair, we started at 10 UTC. Um, 
to try and meet the times of those guys in Australia watching as well. They'll appreciate it if you're in the States. Not a great time for you guys, perhaps. But you can always watch it on demand. You can rewind the stream and have a little look at Melbourne. Here we go. What have we got? Just to go back up. 30. Oh, we'll do 40. Spin it quicker. We've got two more pilots left. Justin, great to hear. Uh, saying a fantastic route as per usual. Really awesome group of Osprey pilots enjoying some new scenery. Thanks heaps, Luke, and good night to all. It's 10.20 for Justin in Perth. Have a good night. Thanks for flying along. Great to see that you've enjoyed it as well. Orbex Melbourne Telemarine hopefully releasing very soon for Microsoft Flight Simulator. As we saw at the start, remarkably nice scenery. Really, really good work from them. Arco, good to hear. I'll check it out at some point. I just don't know when the next stream will be, as we mentioned. The dock is that I assume that's a joke, right? Go. Three, two, one. Whoa, there's a late flare and a bounce. And a little bit of wheel smoke. Love it. Now he's just got to stop in time. Hey, Ian, no, it looked great from here, buddy. Niklaus, welcome aboard. Thanks for subscribing to the channel. He's going to have to backtrack. And we've got one in the hold overhead. There he is. Our last pilot, Graham. Zipping around in the hold at Ovron. Patiently waiting his turn. <laughs> Looks great. He's actually flying over the airfield. Uh, Arco, yeah, we went to uh, a good pet shop yesterday. We bought loads of treats for him, ready stuff to try and keep him occupied. Maybe take the stress out by chewing and things as well. He's going to be kind of bed bound for at least the first two weeks, which is going to make it quite tough, bless him. But he doesn't know. Osprey 569 Charlie, good news. From Ogron, you have cleared the RMT. Yankee, runway 14, Port Roger, Antag. Exiting the hall. <laughs> and I will uh, I'll report uh, on time. What I'm going to do, I'm going to quickly show you if you've never seen this scenery before, we're going to buzz over it because it is remarkable. Look at that. Welcome to the Great Barrier Reef. So there's a hotel over here. Over Las Marinas. To this. <laughs> Little lifts zipping about. Really good. It's a silly little feature that you don't really need, but it adds to how fantastic this scenery is. All the little yachts dotted around as well. 
Lots of custom bits here. Look at that cruise ship there. Popping in the water. They've done the whole island. That beautiful sunset. Got the sailing centre as well here. Look at that. Right, let's get back in position ready for that final approach from today's last pilot in. What a great fly along as well. Everyone's just having to like park up where they can <laughs> and find space. What we got? Sorry about that. That rapid zoom there. My goodness. Haven't been drinking yet. Do that. Hamilton Tower. Oh, that I didn't. I'd know that. So apparently, the controller NPC in the tower, when the airport's closed in real life, aka darkness, apparently he disappears. No, he's still there. Maybe I've just fallen for like a AU scene Hamilton Island drop bear style gag. <laughs> yeah, imagine with scenery like this what MSFS 2024 would look like. It's great, wouldn't it? Is that in real life, Milzy? If so, where is it? Here we go. Probably a medical emergency, Milzy, to be honest, something like that. Let's do this. Final landing today. It's been an absolutely mega fly along as well. Oh, it looks high. Uh, I stayed on a bit too late. It's 12.30 for me. It's about my bedtime. So uh, Hamilton Tower is now closed. Uh, minus Unicom, 122.8. Decimal eight. Good day. Thanks to the ATC. Have a good night. I'll spread on 65 Alpha. Thanks for ATC, baby. Thanks to the ATC. I'll spread 2472. Cheers. He is now. Maybe he's just back on profile. But they've said virtually all add-ons will carry over into MSF 2024, but I don't think they know, I don't think they've really kind of committed to whether or not they need updating first, or files to be tweaked and changed, or anything like that. He's down, looking good. Woof. Looking quick. Absolutely nailed it. <laughs> 
thanks, I'm gonna clean the trash right now. <laughs> Good work. First time I did this guy for real, it was in an Ansett 737-400, so it shows you how long ago it was. My god, yeah, that's a long time ago. Old scar engines, jeez. Right, the I shall leave you to it, folks. I hope you've enjoyed Melbourne Tunnel Marine, a live that. preview from Orbex. I'll I leave you with this beautiful backdrop of uh, Hamilton a, uh, Island by AU Scene, which you can also get elsewhere then, uh, as well. I think later, it's on Contrail. Uh, if you buy anything on Contrail, by the way, go to contrail.shop forward slash British Av Geek, all one word, and it's an affiliate link. It helps you, it's a way for you to support the channel without paying anything extra uh, and all that sort of stuff. So, really good way of helping support the stream without doing anything else, really. You just follow that link and then you buy the scenery as you normally would do via Contrail, just via British Av Geek, uh, by contrail.shop forward slash British Av Geek. Thank you to everybody who's flown along today. Uh, Melbourne, hopefully, releasing very soon, and uh, the links was shared throughout the live stream but it will be on Orbex Central in no time I am sure via their product page. Uh, don't know what the price is or the release date but it is obviously coming soon because we previewed it today. Welcome to all of our new subscribers, thank you to everybody who's hit the like button as well and a massive thank you to our ATC throughout today's journey. Really appreciate you guys staying up late and giving us some VATSIM air traffic control throughout the journey today over the last uh, 4 hours 32 minutes that we've been live for. But in the meantime, as always, thank you very much for watching, everybody. Don't know when the next stream will be uh, yet, but keep an eye on the channel. If you see one scheduled, then you'll know there's one coming. In the meantime, as always, thank you very much for watching. Enjoy the rest of the week ahead, and I'll see you uh, next time. Take care. So I think the stream had all the best of Loki made over, all goes well. Right, is there any room at the end? There will be at a minute. <laughs>